Fuckers, happy 2023. We did it. We made it. Yeah. Congrats. Congrats on getting this far in life. Woo! Welcome to the very first episode of Guys We Fucked of the New Year. Oh boy. Yes, it's the anti slut shaming podcast. I'm Corinne Fisher. I'm Christina Hutchinson. Welcome to the show. Uh. We are here. If I fart, sorry. <laughs> Having a lot of gas this morning, Christina's but it's stuck. Hurt. <laughs> it's stuck. Michael walked into the studio to me keeled over on the couch <laughs> because your girl loves to eat in the middle of the night while I'm sleeping and it's junk food and there's something man if there is a sugary thing in my house it's like my brain goes I'm gonna remember that later while mm-hmm. I'm in the middle of sleep that's the strangest thing it huh? is very weird it's, if anybody else sleep eats and I can't put locks on my cabinets there are no handles so I can't do that. That that suggestion is, and I'm not on I'm not on a sleeping medication. Those are the two most popular questions when I talk about it on Instagram. Can you lock yourself in your room, or does your no? Room, it doesn't have a lock. Mm, no, because if I it, it won't lock from the inside. Because, because if I turn it, it, I mean, I guess lock. that's safe. It's a grim yeah. reality. Though. It's safe Absolutely. that you can't lock yourself in your own. Room, yeah, I I suppose. Suppose. Yes. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so okay, that's a New York prison cell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Can't. Okay, For sure. All right. Well, yeah. You want to email us? It's sorry about last night show at gmail.com. Uh, the subject line for this is longtime boyfriend's older brother flirts with me and is also rude and passive aggressive because I don't reciprocate help. Ooh, we got a gem on our hands. Hi. So I love you guys a million. You're amazing women that deserve the world, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, it's usually the et cetera, et cetera that men give. Um, anyways, I'll get right into it. I have been with my boyfriend for six years. Um, well, so you're due for a breakup. We'll call him Noah Ooh, and like me, Layla. <laughs> You love yourself too. Uh, I am 24 and he is 22. We started dating in high school in the Midwest. He's my soulmate and my best friend and the most attractive person I've ever seen. Wow, crazy that you met that person in high school. Yeah. Uh, I know that's- True Midwest love story. <laughs> I know that's when there's not a lot of options people look better but well that's the thing though it's like yes I do actually believe all these people are falling in love because they don't fucking live like if you don't live in a huge city like yeah you're there's three guys you know and you pick the hottest one yeah (laughs) right and Uh, then you then you got the hottest one which is awesome yeah it's honestly probably better um I know that's shocking because we're from the midwest but seriously he looks exactly like this actor who was my biggest celebrity crush when I was younger and you're not even gonna tell us the actor (laughs) what actor who bitch the fuck can't blue ball us like John Candy. Uh, (laughs) Randy Newman. (laughs) Anyways, I always had dreams of moving to the Pacific Northwest when I was young. And coincidentally enough, uh, Noah's brother, Aiden, who is six years older than Noah, ended up moving there to go to school. So basically, we had our... Um, in to move across the country when we both graduated. Aiden lived there and we could live with him as roommates for a little bit while we saved up for our own place. What what kind of a brother is letting his brother and the girlfriend move in? That's so crazy to me. My brother probably would. That's crazy. I I know Jersey people that have done that. That's crazy. You guys are all insane. I mean, it's not a pleasant experience. Yeah. Uh, It's what you want. Yeah, no. Aiden and I don't hear my brother fucking. Um, Aiden and I had always... No. Yeah. Um, um, Mike, you have to stop moving your foot. I'm sorry. It's distracting me. Um, you can see that? Yes. Yeah, I can too. It's driving me it's nuts. annoying me too, okay. um, Aiden and I had always gotten along. <laughs> <laughs> Aiden and I had, uh, I just saw Foss like a fucking white thing floating in the air. I fidget. Uh, I, I, Mike fidgets and he also has to, can only produce podcasts without shoes on. I look very comfortable. Uh, it's, fi- it's fine. It's, your feet don't really smell. Really making it his home, yeah, huh? Your feet don't smell. Um, Aiden and I had always gotten along with Noah uh, when Noah and I first started dating. He still lived at home with Noah and their mom. So whenever I would go to Noah's house to hang out, he'd usually be there and chill with us. He was always super nice, but I can remember the first thing he ever said that kind of made me feel weird. I don't know. Maybe I'm overreacting. Yeah, but no, Aiden, Noah and I were all hanging out and he oh, and he said, you know why you're lucky, Noah? Because Layla doesn't wear face makeup and she has nice skin. Right, that's rude. That's Yeah, that's not creepy. That's just fucking rude. Um, Just felt like a kind of weird thing to say. Ha ha ha. But I just took it as a compliment. 
compliment and moved on. Okay, so Aiden moves out and he has been living in the Pacific Northwest <laughs> so for like dull. a year. Noah and I save up our money and fly across the country and we move into an apartment with Aiden. We all pay equal halves of rent on a really nice place. Things are great, except oh. Aiden really cranked up the flirting. I was always nice to Aiden and I felt like we had a good friendship back then. And I know men can sometimes mistake niceness for wanting to fuck. Yeah, but when you're his brother's girlfriend, yeah. there's a boundary that's very clear. <laughs> yeah. Very clear. Not a lot to be mistaken. Oh, oh she was nice to me. Sorry. This is her yeah. pussy was out. Doesn't matter. If but your pussy was out. Yes. So I mean, weird. put your pussy away, but. But I honestly never felt like I put out flirty vibes at all. I should probably disclose I do OnlyFans stuff in his. Br okay, this is. Oh, he jerks off to your yeah, OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah, this, is, this explains weird. a lot. That's where it is. <clears throat> it's like when it's like when a female comedian talks about sex on stage, or like because we're the guys we fuck podcast, people think they can just like say crazy shit to us. Yeah. Um, I should probably disclose I do OnlyFans stuff, and his brother knows about this because I'm pretty open about it. So perhaps he thought because I do OnlyFans, I'm just a big hoe bag who would flirt with her brother's boyfriend and be down with it. No, I. I just think he jerks LOL. off to you because he's a subscriber. I also think men and he um, just acts weird. I think men and also just like some people in general, like don't understand that, like just like with every career, like that you don't take your work home with you. So you know, right. like I mean, I just texted our friend D, who's a nurse, a picture of my a full body rash the other day, nice. and I said, I I said D, I am so sorry to be this person, but I said I have exhausted all my options and I need Shit. help. Um, one time when I uh was w okay, wait, so I said this one. Uh, some instances that made me feel a little weird. One time he said to Noah, uh, isn't Layla just amazing after I said something funny? Okay. I mean, that's fine. And also he's like saying all this, like where the fuck, what's, tell your boyfriend to man up. <laughs> Oh, but he's saying this in front of your boyfriend. Right. So I'm not, he's not like... One time when it was just him and I at home, Noah was at work. It was the morning time and I was taking a shower. Uh -oh. he, mm, he knocked on the door and asked me a really stupid question that definitely could have waited until mm, after yes, my shower. That was a flirty move. That's that was a flirty move. Yeah. Fucking disgusting. That was a flirty thing. move. And I couldn't hear him over the shower, so I kept having to ask him to repeat himself. <laughs> oh, what? <boy. laughs> You, what? You, you I am sorry. I've never taken a shower with anyone who wasn't like my boyfriend in the house and not locked the door. I don't care if it's a roommate. I don't trust people. You guys don't watch. Oh, yeah. You guys don't watch enough horror movies. You got to lock the door when you're showering. Um, it felt like he wanted to me to be like, I can't hear you. He, he, why don't you come in, Mister? Yeah, no, we got it. One time he came in my room while Noah was at work. A lot of coming in my room while I'm home and Noah's at work. LOL. I think he probably literally comes in your room Ugh, too when you're not there. Yeah, he's wearing your panties. Um, mm -hmm. And then during the convo, randomly asked me if I thought that him and Noah are similar. You know, just the guy I love and fuck. I just, I said, not really, LOL. A lot of LOLs, but you're 22. Um, he also mm -hmm. would always come into my room like legit 45 minutes before my boyfriend gets home from work and ask if I wanted to smoke weed with him. That's normal roommate stuff. That's not... Yeah, like Noah is almost home. Why don't you just wait so all of us can smoke together if you want to? I get the timing though. Another instance, one time when we were at a car dealership and Noah is getting a new car. Well, why also, why is the brother always with you? Are you guys in a thruple? Yeah. This is weird. While Noah is test driving the, the car with the dealer guy, I'm in the car with Aiden waiting for Noah to come back. He's taking a while. So I say to Aiden, what if they ran away together and laughed? And then he laughed and said, ha ha. Yeah. What if we ran away uh, He definitely together? jerks off to your OnlyFans. <laughs> He one men can't be cool, dude. In these situations, he jerks off to your only. That's fan. so weird. Uh, like that's not what I said. Maybe he mistakenly thought I said that. Stop being no, so he, stop being stop, a bitch. Stop. Um. Anyways, stop. it was fucking weird. A lot of more little stuff, just complimenting my outfits and appearance a lot, which is fine. But considering all the other stuff, it just made me a little uncomfy. Always saying things to me and talking to me and not Noah. <laughs> But okay, but so why isn't Noah noticing this? Okay, so Noah picked up on the flirt. Okay, so okay, good. Okay, so Noah <laughs> picked up on the flirting a lot. It would piss him off, which is understandable. Uh, if my older sister was flirting with my boyfriend, I'd be like, "What are you doing, you weird ass bitch?" No loyalty. Okay. Um, he also started. I don't know if I've called my sister a weird ass bitch. Uh, he also started trying to make my boyfriend feel bad about himself all the time. Uh, these emails from girlfriends who are like, ha who's like whose boyfriends can advocate for themselves drive me nuts mm -hmm. saying mm -hmm. sly little things saying sly things to belittle him backhanded comments honestly sounded like he was trying to make noah seem less than all of the time that's between them they're fucking brothers this had never been the case before it was like there was almost an entire personality switch after we all started living together 
which I know probably wasn't the best idea, but I had a dream, baby. Okay. What was your dream? Your dream was to live in live the Pacific your... Northwest? Yeah. I mean, that's a real, you did it. Okay. <laughs> so now, right. now dream another dream <laughs> to get your own apartment. <laughs> oh man. And I thought it wouldn't be so bad because we all got along really well in the Midwest. So anyways. But things are different I feel like I'm reading here a, in Seattle. I feel like I'm reading a diary. Yeah. Of a 13 year old. So anyways, seeing how this upset my boyfriend and how Aiden started treating him, I pulled back a little on the niceness with Aiden and started being more cold. Once I was no longer my super friendly self to him, it seemed like he honestly turned into a huge asshole. Yeah, the men don't do that all the time. The type of person I hated being around. He acted super pretentious and narcissistic, always putting others down to make himself feel and look better, making sideways comments. He was kind of like that a little bit before, but nowhere now, near now, the way he started acting, just bad energy, honestly. He wasn't like unbearable to be around, I suppose, but just not the type of person I'd hang out with. We, uh, we need to have Isabella. It's a real stream of consciousness. Person I'd hang out with on my own, you know? Yeah, that's there's just like dangling, dangling participles, um, but would still flirt with me from time to time. It started giving me um, a lot of anxiety, like this email, and started yeah. the end, tor and towards the end of living together, he literally acted like he didn't like us and was always saying rude shit. If I swear to God, if you, the, the, at the end of this email, you're like, now we live alone and everything's fine, I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> then after like a year and a half of living together, we all move out and go our separate ways, oh, wow. thanks fucking Christ. He now lives like 15 minutes um, you said uh, you mean it wise. Okay, now my problem. Okay, so the, okay, so wait. So they moved. You moved this, out. That was, was for, that was for color. It was like for context. <laughs> this whole, this whole, whole thing was context. <laughs> so now on to the actual problem. Here's where the movie starts. Honestly, that was all context. Honestly, babe, this is why men say women shouldn't be stand-up comedians. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she's not wrong. Word okay. economy is a real Men who are important just, thing. Just thrilled to hear stories from but their girlfriends. I, 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 <laughs> but this is why when I even hear of like a thirty, when a thirty-five year old man dating a twenty-two year old, I'm like, you're sick in the head. Oh my god, not, you're not. It's the same intellectual level. No, you're an asshole. I don't care. Match. I'm uh, I, I'm done now. You know me. I'm only twenty nine and under, baby. Um, <laughs> yes, babe. Please now tell me what color shirt uh, you were wearing that day. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Now my problem. Problem. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> Noah and Aiden are the only children of their parents. Yeah, siblings. And they're. <laughs> <laughs> What? Not everything. Wow. Yeah, that's like a normal amount of kids, kids. Yeah, <laughs> to have family to have. Noah and Aiden are the only children of their parents, and their mom still lives in the Midwest, is always wanting Noah and Aiden to hang out together. Okay, cool. What? And make sure we we do every goddamn every single goddamn holiday. Where about your family? Yeah, where's your family? And Aiden texts Noah and wants us all to hang out all the time, even when he acted like he didn't even like us the last bit of living together. And I hate it. Okay. This feels like my middle school diary. The worst thing also is that not only are we forced to hang out with him, you're not. not. Forced. You're actually not forced. That's but, in your head. Yeah, girl. but he just never wants to hang out just him and Noah. It's always that he wants to hang out with yes, Noah because he I. wants to fuck you yeah he wants to fuck you and he jerks off to your only fan so he's weird around you no it doesn't have a nice rack and him and the girl Correct. of the month from tinder that he's usually with okay, okay. he's allowed to date another girl a girl new girl every well, month you jealous well, whatever you jealous? yeah i mean he's allowed to <laughs> i mean this guy's I, it could be a situation where this guy's clearly like meet my new friend alexa and right. he's trying to like make her jealous but she doesn't give a shit yeah that he, could be happening he usually never keeps a relationship for more than like three to four months okay so now now we're nitpicking aiden because of his dating habits but you don't you i mean you should be you should just be like gay he's with someone else good right. yeah. good it almost feels like he's trying to prove something at times men are always trying to prove something everyone's always trying to prove something welcome to life i'm pretty introverted to begin with and i hate meeting new people all the time honestly on top of having having to hang out with aiden and the girls we have to hang out with are usually annoying and just not the type of people I usually spend my time with. No one's arresting you and forcing you in a jail mm. cell with these people. Yeah, honestly, it, uh, uh, anyways, it honestly seems like he has some kind of really weird jealousy towards Noah and the whole situation just makes me extremely uncomfortable and gives me such bad anxiety and every time my boyfriend says we're oh going boy. to hang out with Aiden, my stomach goes in knots and I just hate it so much. Guys, we didn't read this email before we read it. Um, we never read the emails because we like to react organically, right. but this, this one. This is a bad one. Um, am I being insane or a huge brat? I honestly try to... <sighs> 
I would say let's stop worrying about aid and then just take a writing class. Um, I honestly try to cancel as much as I can when it's not a holiday, which I feel bad about. I don't want to keep my boyfriend from his brother. But it, you don't. They're it. fine. But it's not like Aiden ever asked him to hang out alone. Aiden and Noah also work together, and there's been so okay. But Jeez. that doesn't make sense because you always said that Aiden, uh, uh, Aiden was trying to hang out with you when Noah was on his way home from work. So just no, Aiden just comes home from the office early, or they just like have a job. We don't like what what's happening. Different here? Positions at the same company. What's going a bit on? Convoluted. Yeah, Aiden and Noah also work together, and there's high. been so many times that Noah has come home I and seemed so. upset, and come to find out Aiden is making Noah feel like shit about himself and just making weird comments that's that make his feel job bad. to stand up to his goddamn motherfucking brother why is your whole life he about your a, boyfriend he oh because grown- you're 22 okay <sighs> um because you're 22 and a straight woman in, in the in the world i got it this is honestly not your fault a lot of this is society's fault i'm not i'm not but, blaming you but like there's you, areas you can fix if you listen to this show you well, like the to me the benefit of listening to older women talk is that you don't have to fucking waste the time and make the mistakes that we made that's the point mm-hmm. so if you're not making mm-hmm. those corrections ahead of time, why are we talking for 90 minutes every week? Right. Um, I've told Noah recently that I felt uncomfortable around Aiden and he just really isn't the kind of person I'd want to spend any Good. time around if I wasn't dating Noah and that Aiden had flirted with me, which probably wasn't the best decision, but it happened. Mm-hmm. Noah got um, really angry, but he also has a super soft soul. Oh, Does he? He's okay. 24. Um, he said, I think his soul is like Cheetos and a bong. Yeah. Um, he said he and, felt- a, <laughs> and a PlayStation. <laughs> Never met a 24 year old who like he has a soft, soft soul. soul. Um, he said was he, he a nom? <laughs> oh my god! He said he felt bad for his brother and wanted to love him because he's his brother, and how he just couldn't think about him flirting with me for the sake of the family. What do I do? I don't want to upset my boyfriend's family and make them think I'm isolating my boyfriend or something, but I fucking hate hanging out with this dude. But Noah feels like my soulmate and I could honestly see your soulmate would stick up for you, first of all. Mm -hmm. Uh, But Noah feels like my soulmate and I could honestly see myself with him forever. And this just feels like such a big hindrance. I want to get along with his family and not feel anxious and just everything to be normal. Yeah, Uh, everyone wants that. Any help or responses is obviously appreciated. And then she says, thanks, gals, with a uh, lot of four A's. Four A's, yes. Okay. Um, Okay. (laughs) I mean, you're not ready to get married to anyone. Sure. I can tell that just by the this email your emotional maturity (laughs) it it, it needs well first of all your brain isn't fully developed yet until you're 25 yeah Um, so don't get Jesus Christ for the love of God please don't get engaged don't get married before you're 25 just don't yeah just don't don't. wait did you say you're 26 though and he's 20 no 22 24 24 okay got it got it got it got it yeah yeah so I'm curious like I mean I was wondering what the boyfriend was doing and thinking this whole time and you kind of let us in on that but he seems like a pussy yeah yeah (laughs) I, you know, the comedian sure in me and the host the host of guys who fuck the, sometimes they're at odds. But yeah, big old pussy. And it's funny because to- when, when I know pussy is like about vaginas, but I think of a little cat. Like I don't, I yeah. don't think of it as derogatory like, towards women. That's no, what it means. I think of it as like that's the origin. I don't know the origin is a cat? a cat. Yeah. Oh the really? Is, yeah, it's not a vagina. It's a pussy cat. Oh, so then all these like so feminine, all these people that are mad on the internet yeah. are wrong. To yeah. my to my understanding, like, it's like the when you call somebody a pussy cat or a pussy willow, you're calling them. Well, like, I've never oh. called Mike. Are you calling people a pussy willow? No, I, but that's I, you like should start. Wait, watch wait. A movie from like the sixties or the seventies. That Randy Newman will call you a pussy um, willow. <laughs> origin. Yeah, I, when I think of the word pussy, yeah, I. I've also seen the videos online of women being like, we need to stop saying this because vaginas are strong. And it's like, yeah, vaginas are strong, but what if that wasn't the origin of the word? Yeah, I don't think, I think that's so funny. We get so mad about shit and then we're wrong. Because I don't think (laughs) pussy was like a slang for for vagina until like. Until I said it. Okay, so it's a German origin. It's, it's, and it's a shortened form of the Latin word Pusillanimous. Yep. Um, all right. Pusillanimous. Wait. Okay. And then there's a whole article from Glamour. Where does the word pussy come from and should feminists really use it? But okay. So apparently the, it's hotly debated. Wait. Ooh. I don't know where the, which the fucking one is. But like pussycat and pussy well, I do know those were things that people used to call other people. Yeah. So it would make sense if. Because when I think pussy, I just think like coward. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think when you call somebody a pussy cat, I don't think of a vagina at back all. in the de- like like uh, the odd couple or whatever in the sixties. I yeah, know there's yeah, a time yeah. like the, there's uh, that's in the script where uh, Oscar calls Felix a uh, uh, like a, a pussy cat. It's supposed yeah. to mean like a soft, softy. Yeah. Yeah. So like yeah. the the slang the, the the origin word puss pussillanimous means cowardly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's um, but it is debate. It's debated like where we got pussy from. But I say that we can use it. I, I think that I we think can so. use yeah, it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Order rules. <laughs> but okay, yes. back to the anyway, your boyfriend's a like pussy. A pussy. <laughs> yeah. Girl, your boyfriend a big old pussy. Yeah. Um and you're very young and um the way that you write this email is immature, like emotionally immature in mm-hmm. a way that is, you know, for your age, it's fine. I and I, I'm saying that knowing that if someone fucking said that to me when I was 22, 23, I'd be like, mm, go fuck yourself. Because that's an immature response. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> All checks out. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. So, exactly. Uh, so, I would say you got a lot of growing up to do and no, I, I feel like you guys... I think it's a hindrance being with somebody you were with since you were like fucking 16. I mean, I, I think, I, I think, the, so this email is all about one He's problem. He's not standing up for you. Where is his, where is, where are the yeah. qualities you love so much? Where are they? I, I just I think, don't see them. I think the problem is you're so young to have your life so intertwined with someone else. Yeah. And you wrote us an entire fucking email that's literally, you use the word Noah like 87,000 times, which again is, is a symptom of being a young person, especially in their first relationship. I definitely said my first boyfriend's name like 10,000 times for sure um but it's like you you've 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 done you've you've made like this to me like this is like female original sin is like fucking making your whole life about your first boyfriend yeah i don't know like i guess this email just like makes me sad because like you okay so your number one dream was moving to the pacific northwest and then you did it but it's like you know it's all surrounding your boyfriend and his family and now you're this it's taking up so much headspace and like just move like what are your dreams here's what i encourage you to do i encourage you to take a solo trip somewhere go to a city go to like a big city in in the united states i highly recommend new york but like get to know yourself because this email the another reason why this email screams immaturity is like i don't feel like you really know yourself and one of the main uh, pieces of proof of that is you don't say like Corinne mentioned you don't say anything about you like what's your life like what and I'm thinking you know growing up in the Midwest you might not have been presented with a lot of options that's why I think you should t- you should go on a solo like a three day weekend with yourself in a city and just go oh wow the world is so much bigger than I realized yeah yes. and then also if you're if also if you're just like if you're spending this much time thinking about somebody else who's not like you it's know too much actively real estate. dying or something it's too much real estate this is way too much time to be thinking about someone else like start 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 the day with like what do i want for myself today like yeah. like literally if you have to like write it down on like a notepad and look at look at it there's just it's, you got to practice your, your your life is just way too centered on someone who's not you the, yeah, the twenties are for being fucking selfish, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah. Michael. The only thing I really wanted to add, uh, if we look at this on the bright side, and she is really serious about this guy, sure. And, and if it, if it, it could goes be, in that and direction, you absolutely could be. It's not. Yeah. Did I miss it in the email? Has she talked to the brother at all? Has she directly said to the brother? No, she. Ju- it seemed like she. Done, she just changed her attitude towards him. Like she kind of like wasn't as nice to him she just so she just decided to sort of live with it and give him a little bit of a also keep in mind he's a, it's, the it's, brother's it's like a 30 year old man yeah. and she's a 22 year old girl right, no, right, totally, right. Totally, that's like totally. big power dynamic I, difference I, i'm not blaming anybody yeah yeah I, I'm yeah just saying I, I think i mean it doesn't sound like that was necessarily an approach that was taken at all to just right. also like your your boyfriend definitely should be standing up yeah. for you in this situation because it's his especially because it's his brother it's not even just a friend right but at the same time i mean if it's never been directly Hand. I think young people do this a lot. People under thirty, yeah. where they just sort of make these assumptions that they can't sure. talk to somebody directly. I still and do say, yeah, yeah. yeah, like this thing makes me uncomfortable. Like, what are like? Are you doing this? Or do you yeah, realize are, you're doing this? Yeah, you, yeah. You know? There's well, especially cool women. Yeah, there's this cool thing that happens when you get older. Where you, one, you stand up for yourself more, but you also like, like make him responsible for his own behavior. Right, He's right. taking his behavior and throwing it at you and then you're writing us an email about it. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Reflect a mirror back to his behavior and go, 
Why I noticed that this is what you're doing. Why why the sudden change in attitude? Right. What's going on? Because the truth you're is you're acting weird towards me and I feel it. I really feel it. It's obvious. So tell me what's going on. People it, push you as far as they can. Yes. It's, 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 it's also like a thing to see, like, you know, if they're gonna respect you or not. People love to do this with me. I say, Oh, game on, do it. <laughs> um uh you're gonna lose this one and go have to go to therapy. Um, but yeah. And also this is a whole fucking email about women needing to get mind their own business and get their own lives, because the mom also needs her own own life like yeah. what everyone fucking get your own life ladies i and I, that is a midwest thing because i've dated yeah. enough guys from the fucking midwest and it's and, it, and it's like makes and th and that's what you know that's why they always go on to you know just date someone after who's like less mouthy than me um <laughs> i get it that's you grew, you grew up with a less mouthy woman less but mouthy. that's not my fucking problem nope yeah i mean i i just think that there's there's a uh, uh th things can't change unless problems are addressed right so i think that there is a level of communication that needs to happen probably between the three of them not just necessarily her and the brother but yeah. like the, the boyfriend's got to get involved too it's someone just got to be in the someone... open because otherwise it's going to be this weird thing that's kind of never talked about and then the that problem is problem. no one in the situation is being an adult right no one in the situation is going hey guys this is what's happening it's super fucking obvious it's been happening for years what say you noah right and what fucking 30 year old you, wants to spend all this time with people in their early 20s? That's weird. A creep. It's tough. It's weird. He's creepy. And he jer I, I think I'm willing to bet he jerks off to her, his, her only fans. Yeah. For sure. uh, yeah. And, and he's like, so one do of that those, in the privacy of your own home. Right. But he's one of those immature guys that act weird. Oh, God. You know, I know not every guy's like that, but like I've met a couple that I'm like, you fucking be cool, dude. Yeah. This Put is, your dick away. This is just really the whole thing. It's hanging out of your eyes. Come on. But it's also like, to me, it's just like, okay, so you're, you're, brother can't say anything and your boyfriend can't say anything to his brother it's like doesn't that make you lose respect for your boyfriend mm -hmm. and like that. respect respecting your partner is one of the most important things in a relationship yeah. if you don't respect your partner like, you, you don't want to fuck them and like i've had to ask myself that while i was dating people i was like do i like this person okay yeah but like do i actually respect them and mm -hmm. like i don't Very respect good question to ask. that many people so it's like that's a fucking and it's a tough question to ask yourself about someone that like you like or you're like attracted to because yeah. they answer might surprise you because it might be no yeah <laughs> oh okay there's pictures is that her boyfriend he looks like he a looks child. like he's 10 I, I i'm gonna have to see these at some point she i mean i gotta uh, know what's going on over also there. okay <laughs> you're like a very sexy 22 year yeah old. you're very sexy your titties are out you know your titties are out because you dressed yourself because you're an adult Go ahead and forward uh, that if those me. all right <laughs> Okay. No. <laughs> she's like um, she's like angelically just beautiful. Subscribe to her fucking OnlyFans. Yeah. Um and get her paid. Um but yeah, if your titties are out when you're talking to God, to the brother, um, that could also make, not that that's your problem, but yeah, like, it's not your problem. It's yeah. not your problem, but the same thing you got to your titties are out. Motherfucker's is going to be weird. I mean, that's just that happens. So, they're not they're not allowed to they, that doesn't mean they have permission to touch you or say like crude things, but um I don't know. Just, just know that uh, shit changed when I saw your picture. Yeah, and also now that I saw, now that I saw, that's why you don't write well. <laughs> I don't have to. I have big tits. But girl, let me tell you something. The girl with big tits Learn, said it, not me. Learn how to write the curse well. Of the big tits. Learn how to write well and be hot with big tits. World's your oyster, baby girl. Learn science. I want, I want ten percent fee. Own the world. Um, okay. And also, now that I see a picture of your boyfriend, I know why he hasn't stood up to anyone. Yeah, he looks like pusillanimous. What is the word? Pus pusillanimous. This isn't your soulmate. Girl. Yeah, I don't. I no, hate to tell no. you. He you're gonna. Like you're gonna. Keep... Girl, you're gonna find a hot like thirty-two year old man. <laughs> that's like a lawyer that drives a fucking Lambo, but like is kind to animals. And you're going to be like, Oh, I have a boyfriend. You're yeah, trust me. <laughs> perfect. That, man. And you know what? I really, I doubly no one who likes animals drives. A I Lambo. fucking <laughs> doubly stand by my suggestion for you to go to a big city because every you're going to be hot. To, those, you're going to, those are big city. Tits. <laughs> those are big city titties. Okay. Those cities and let me tell you, world. it's fun being a young, hot woman in the world. It's oh very fun. God. If you don't enjoy that, that's a fucking, it's sin. even fun being a middle-aged hot woman in the world. hundred percent. Um, okay. Uh, God, I mean, that's that's your boyfriend scary. looks like he just came out of hiding from the annex. Your boyfriend oh, looks like yeah. he's Harry Potter's roommate, but in the first movie. That's a bit of a mismatch. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. How old is he? 24, 24. He's older. Wow. Oh, wait, I thought she was 20. Or she's oh she was well, twenty four she's twenty two oh then your writing skills are so bad <laughs> yeah it's pretty bad girl girl <laughs> I I wanna I I 
<laughs> you called her angelic. <laughs> she is. She's, she is. She's gorgeous, but she's there's absolutely so many, stunning. There's so many pros. <laughs> but like, yeah. if I was hot, like if I was 22 and that's stunning, I'm like, enjoy that. Yeah. I, I would can't enjoy believe that. that kid is getting fucked by her. That's yeah, incredible. Neither, neither can he. Yeah. Neither can he. That's or incredible. May, maybe and we then, flip this on this ear. Maybe and then this kid 22. has incredible game. He looks doubt. like a 17 year old. He looks 12. <laughs> yeah. He looks like he's 12. It looks like this is an illegal relationship. Yeah, I mean, this um, looks like this. I've dated a 23 year old and this looks uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. I, I couldn't, I could not let this man penetrate. This boy yeah, penetrate. Yeah. Me. yeah. It would feel like I'm abusing him. And like you look like an a, a you look like woman an adult because yeah. of the huge rack. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, uh, wow, God. that was that was that I was, wish we saw the fucking photo before we read the email. Although it's kind of funny that, that we did threw it me because for a fucking this really loop. this really changes things. Holy shit. That's yeah. why we say guys, send us photos. But yeah. if you're gonna send us photos, say you included them in the e top of the email. Yeah. Cause I'd like to see the photo also, before I start. Changes you're playing everything. Russian roulette with this kid's face because he he could go either way. Yeah, he this could is look not like a definite a, hottie. He could look like an he old could, guy named Igor. Right. He could be hot. He could he be could smoking be hot, smoking but he hot. could be... He could be Adrian Brody, but he could be not Adrian Brody. <laughs> He's got to get in the weight room, too. He could be... Uh John Candy. Yeah, and so no wonder. So so he's so so oh, so that means six years he older. He could be Rasputin. So his I just so I guess his brother's only twenty eight then, but still. So wait, who do we who do we think he looks like? Because she said he looked like an actor that uh, she was into. Must Kevin be. from Home Alone, <laughs> like Macaulay Culkin. I, this, wait, who this, is what's the Harry Potter's name? Um, Daniel, Daniel Radcliffe. Radcliffe. Yeah, I mean it's not. He's a he's a little more handsome than Daniel Radcliffe, but yeah, I less mean bir less bird like, but a little Rasputin. -y. Uh, a little Rasputin. -y. That's why when Corinne said he could go either way with the age, yeah. she's so right. Yeah. He could be smoking hot or he could be look like he smells bad. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know? That nose is on the edge and the brows could go either way. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> hey guys, looks matter. I wish they didn't, but they fucking do. You have eyes, so do we. But also oh, shut the fuck up. They don't just matter for like how how bold you can be. I think they also ma they they matter because it changes how people react to you. Yeah, exactly. And and people's first impression of you is yeah. almost always it's your energy for sure. But also in front of that is your looks, is what they see. Yeah, and it changes how people treat you. I know now, now like once I saw the photo I said, oh this is why no one's respecting him. This is why his brother's actively trying to fuck his girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he, he, weigh, he weighs a buck ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you and your titties out like, why is my boyfriend's brother? Yeah, your so bra weighs me? a buck ten. <laughs> <laughs> They're so big. Get it, girl. God get damn. Those, you must get be... those big titties to the city and have yourself a time. Also, why did you ever have to share space with anyone? I know. You, you, should, got, you should have a rich man paying for you. You got right. penthouse titty money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. And if not... And not... red hair. Right. And you have gorgeous yes. red hair. And, and bright blue eyes. Girl. Girl. Sorry. You should you be gotta, making you gotta... like $10,000 a month on oh, OnlyFans. 100%. Yeah. That she could definitely... James Harden could pay for her tuition off of like one night in the in the champagne. Who's that? He's, oh, the he's like athlete the, who goes... Yeah, he's like the most famous strip club basketball nice. player. He loves strip clubs. Oh, hell yeah. And I've heard from guy. personal sources that he has... He has Fully paid for women's like like college tuitions good for him. in one night. Oh, just good. Like, Athletes make too much money. Good. Yeah. Use wow. Get you off the pole, sweetheart. Wow. Welcome to Atlanta, baby. Oh, boy. Kate, okay, come That's see so us live. Crazy. Guys, I'm going on tour. I have a lot of tour dates for 2023, but I'm going to read some up until April, okay? Nyack, New York. Levity Live, February 2nd through 4th. I am headlining. I'm doing an hour of brand new stand-up comedy. Come see me. Winnipeg, Canada. I'm doing Rumors, February 9th to the 11th. Uh, new Westminster, British Columbia, Canada. We're doing House of Comedy, March 16th through the 18th. Dallas, Texas, 24th to the 26th of March. March. Boston, Massachusetts, Laugh Boston, I'm doing April 14th and 15th, Edmonton, Canada, comic strip, April 20th through the 22nd, and Detroit, Michigan, I'm coming to the House of Comedy, and mm, I'm headlining April 28th and the 29th. And then, if that wasn't enough for you, I have a Patreon where you could pay $5 a month and do group Zoom therapy and quotes chat because I'm not a licensed therapist. Call it group lamenting, but it's really cool. Uh, five bucks a month gets you, we do it four times uh, a month, and then you also get brand new vo uh, episodes of The Voices in Our 
heads. And then I share like random weird personal shit. I'm kind of like experimenting with what I like sharing because it's a niche little group. And I put up the video. I'm putting up the video this week of me finding out that I was a sperm donor baby. I recorded that phone conversation because I thought it was a joke. And I was like, well, you know what? It's a fun moment to have. I'll put it up on my Patreon. I saw that unfolding live on Instagram stories. And I just said, I don't feel like this is going to end well. <laughs> and she was right. Uh, so I have a couple tour dates. Uh, I might add more. I might, I might not got to see how the, what, what, what we're doing this year. Uh, so Austin, Texas, uh, Friday, February 10th. I'm at the Vulcan gas company. Uh, then moving on to Houston, Texas, the next day, Saturday, February 11th, I'll be at Rockefeller's. Uh, there's two shows at that venue. Then the following weekend, um, Toronto, Canada, I am at comedy bar from, uh, Friday, February 17th and Saturday, February 18th. All those ticket links are up. The links are in the link tree, uh, link in my bio on Instagram at philanthropy gal. I think they're also all at Corinne Fisher dot com. And then, um, also first week in April, I'm going, I'll be somewhere in Ireland and I'm probably going <gasps> to perform. So yes. Yeah, so. Oh, we have so many Irish fuckers. Oh, they're, and they're great. Yeah. So Very I just, exciting. you know, I was, I'm going anyway. So I know you guys would be mad if you saw that I was there and I didn't perform. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, going, yeah. Uh, I'll pick, I'll pick someplace. Uh, got to email my agent today about yeah, that. Yeah. 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 You but. should do the same one I did. It's really, it's fucking fantastic. Oh, I'm so excited you're going to Ireland. That's truly one of my favorite places. Yeah. I just, I just, uh, honestly, my friends were going and I just, I'm going to tag along to other trips that people are going <gasps> That's on. That's so fun. It wasn't like on my top list, but I was like, eh, everyone likes it. Yeah. Yeah. You won't have a bad time. <laughs> not that I have anything against it. What a selling point. No. Are you going with uh, comics? Not my top I, list. But... No, I'm going okay. with Tommy. I would never fucking travel with comics except for you. Um, Thanks. Uh, yeah. No, I'm going with Tommy and Grant. And, oh, um, that'll be fucking fun. Yeah. I, Great uh, gay clubs. You know, because my number one is Finland, but then I had a Finnish audience member um, in one of my crowds this weekend, and I go, maybe not the place for me. Oh. Um, but no, I just wanted to, you know, because I wanted to go to Finland because um, I want to uh, pet reindeer and go uh, dog sledding. So that's Finland's Ooh. my number one, but I'm also trying to go there this year and perform comedy. So if you're in Finland, let Ooh, me know. Yeah. I, I've never heard from a Finnish fucker, but we, I want to go to Germany and perform. Yeah. Because we were in, remember we were in that German magazine? I do remember. So Germany is supposed to be the most attractive people. Really? Like it's like a misconception that it's like Sweden. I, I've heard across the board it's Germany. Oh, I could see that. Yeah. You know who else thought that? that? Yeah, Hitler. Well, that's that's literally <laughs> the joke that they made. And then like it was a comic. Oh. A comic was telling a story. I about literally it. was like, who? And they were like, <laughs> Wow, wow, Christina. Wow. And it was a Jewish comic telling the story, and he was like looking around and, and he was said, I was in Germany, and then he goes, All right, well, I see, I see what Hitler had <laughs> right. meant now. Yeah. They're pretty hot. <laughs> right, 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 Jesus. right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how are you? That's that. That's so um, fun. Yeah. I mean, Travel, baby. Yeah. I'm excited. Just getting getting out. And then, of course, um, this weekend we are going to Las Vegas. Las Vegas for the AVN Awards. We really should be pushing. Uh, oh, we should have told oh, Isabella. Vote. We got to push people to vote oh, yeah, a yeah, little yeah. bit more. I mean, you know, not that we are think that we are going to beat everyone, but, but it's possible. We don't want to have like, you know, the least amount of votes. For sure. What? There's a lot of podcasts nominated, but let me tell you something. We're the best one. Yeah, what, is, what is the, the category? Is best it just podcasts. sex podcasts? No, just podcasts. Okay. It's, but they're it's all sex podcasts. Right, yeah, okay. so it's obviously like sex. Really. And the thing, well, the thing is, I people started tweeting us that we were nominated and I had known that on the SCR show, um, uh, Big J Ogerson and Ralph Sutton were had kind of like made a bid to get nominated because it was like a bit that was going around. You know, comedians always doing oh, bits. Oh, um, wow, we didn't even have to make a bid. Nice. And then, uh, yeah, and then people started tweeting us that we were nominated and I thought it was just like gas digital people trolling us. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. We was really big, I ran into Big y'all. J a couple days later and he's like, Are you going? And I said, Oh, that wasn't a joke. <laughs> and he's like, No, come. And I was no like, Okay, you guys. Right, sure. Big J texted me a picture of his shoes. He's pumped. He, we're gonna it's Aww, gonna be cute. Oh, that's so sweet. We're gonna look good. We're gonna dress up. Fun. Jay's gonna dress up. Yeah, he Aww, told me his whole great. about his whole outfit. It's very wow. exciting. I'm so excited. Yeah, we're flying in for the day. Well, the night. We're yeah. gonna have a, we'll have a crate. I'm excited to go to those parties. I will yeah. say, um, like watch like being around a porn star that you jerk off to. I know men are worse at that situation, but I'm also not great at it. So I'm curious to see if any of the guys 
There's a couple guys that I like on porn. I was I like, I've never jerked off to a man in porn. I haven't watched. Por- Actually, I, I would haven't remember. Watched, I, haven't, I haven't watched porn in like almost a year. Yeah, me neither. Um, I haven't watched it in so long. But uh, there are a couple. Somebody suggested that I follow this guy on Instagram. I forget his name, but oh my God, he doesn't only fans. Oh, he's really sexy, um, but he does porn. So if he was there, I don't know. It'll be. I'm excited. I just want like, to see how it's going to feel. Touch boobs, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I never get to. So. Story of my life. <laughs> Be like, can I touch your boobs? Um, Do you think we could touch their or are porn stars like, ugh, if one more purse, it's like, I think some people are probably cool with it and some people aren't. Okay. You could just ask. Never know if you don't ask, <laughs> right? A mischievous little boy <laughs> smile. <laughs> Excuse me, miss. Can I touch your kitty, please? Thank you. Really send my day up. Yeah, no. Okay, so wait, wait when's the last time we recorded? It's been two weeks. We uh, skipped weeks. last week. Yeah, yeah. right. So that was, weeks, so it was so Christmas and the New 19th. Year's has happened since. So 19th. Okay, yeah. So um, obviously, you know, I had my existential crisis. Hell you know, yeah. I did have to go back and watch that because <clears throat> anytime I have, a, you know, some kind of a breakdown on the show, I got to watch it. And then I go, no, that was um, eloquent and beautiful as always, Corinne. Um, we did get a lot of feedback from it. So I got a lot of people are also apparently having existential essential crises and like didn't know that they were going through that you know a lot of like you know middle-aged men but that's fine whoever whoever i vibe with constant battle i I mean i kind of am you know i'm am um (laughs) yeah so uh things actually uh got uh even worse since um i left and i mean it it was just it it like it like hit truly like emotional rock bottom there was like another like two straight days of crying like post christmas and Mm. then uh, on the 29th, the the light lifted the clouds parted. and I pulled myself out of bed and I said, Corinne, you got to do what you do every year this weekend, which is go see David Tell at Caroline's, especially because Caroline's, this is, was their closing mm-hmm. um, iconic comedy club in Times Square in New York City, if you're not familiar. And uh, and so I texted Ian Fidance <clears throat> because he, you know, always uh, performs with Dave. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, I'm going to come. I was like, just, you know, I'm like, you know, because me and Ian are very, you know, Ian's dad is also dead. And so we, we've we been, very, you know, we're very close and, um, and talk a, a lot. silly goof too. Yeah. And uh, so I just gave him the heads up. I was like, I'm not going to ruin anyone's time, but I'm having a fucking full meltdown. And, but you know, good I just place to go around Ian and Dave. <clears throat> those are good hangs. Yeah. And I was like, and I'm, I never, you know, I, I, you know, I don't bring my bad mood places. I just push it deep inside and then um, yeah. handle it at home. And then I show, and then he uh, showed up and then Dave's like, do you want to like he's like please like do a set on the show and i was like fuck yeah Uh, but also so nervous because like for all the time i've known dave like he's very generous with stage time um but i get i just get very nervous in front of like there's like it's very few people I care about and Dave is one of them. Um, and like, he knows, like I have kind of like a very on record crush, crush on Dave Attell. Like mm-hmm. he knows, but I think, you know, it's like when you're so open about a crush that I think the person thinks you're joking, right. but I Ian, think there's a little bit of that going on there. There was a moment like years ago when Ian was like, wait, does Corinne li- really have a crush on Attell? I'm like, uh, yeah. And he's like, Oh, well, oh, and, Jeff Frost, and Jeff Ross also was like, was like trying to encourage it. Oh, okay. you know, so that's too, yeah. And you know, and then tired. I literally asked Dave on a date to your party, right? And he said, yeah, like, and I and I called it a date, like, yeah. So that because I appreciate clarity, yeah. And he said yes, and he gave me four. He and like, did. we'll and text he sometimes, up. like nothing weird. He's like, couldn't be nicer or and like more appropriate. But like, it's but just, like, come on, Dave, get dirty. Well, it's just no. I, I just like I think he. And then I'm not gonna help because like I'm actually nervous, right? And it's just like a fucking comedy of errors. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So and then he and then right was like when I was going on stage, like the crowd was a little weird, and I was like going up second, and I'm just like, oh my god, it's like sold out. Caroline's like. I don't want to fucking bomb in front of David's right. hell. And I'm also like down on stand up right now. And I, and I had just come off the holidays. So I hadn't done stand up in like a week. Yeah. And, and then I see him following Shit. me out. And I was like, fuck, you didn't watch the comic before. Why right. are you watching me? Yeah. Cause he doesn't watch everybody. <laughs> and I was All like, no. <laughs> and then I was like, just bitch, you can, I was like, you can do this. You know what you're fucking doing. Yep. You know yep. what you're fucking doing. And then I did it and I did well. Thank God. Woo. Um, yes. And, uh, yeah. And then, and then, and then we just like hung out in the green room for the rest of the night. I got to watch Dave's whole set. It was fantastic as usual. And he was like, let's, let's work together again. And I was like, yes, please. Let's work together every day and also live together. And I was like, get married. Ooh. Um, but so that like, so that just like kind of like reinvigorated me because you know, like there is like the power of Dave Attell. Like I remember like, 
when I was a baby comic, I used to, if I was having a bad night, I would literally go to the cellar and check the board to see if Dave was going to be there. And then like, just wait to see him. There's just something, Messiah. there's just something about him that like, he always makes me feel better. Like, he, it's not like, and it's not like he's like saying like profound things. I mean, he has, but it's not like he is. It's just like, yeah, he's just, just something about, along with his iced coffee usually. Yeah. But, like, his presence, that's his why I say Messiah. His presence is just, his, his presence is comic Messiah. Like, oh, just like, he doesn't behave him. like that. He's just, himself which is nice he just a nice like just a great person yeah um oh, that's so great i'm so glad he put you up and then yeah and it was like really cool to like perform at caroline's like on the last weekend it was just like because i just i also just felt as a comic like i do go to david's house you know last weekend in december at caroline's every year that's my tradition for myself but i also you know i was like i feel like you know i just had to pay my respects to caroline's yeah for sure um for the stage time and the experiences i had there yeah uh <laughs> like the time i accidentally got in a huge fight with amy schumer that yeah up on the air. I was there for that. <laughs> yeah, oh, whoops. Um, she it's was fine. Out of line. It's okay. We're it's fine now. Hey, um, you know, fame fame fucks people up sometimes. It's also, right. I'm still that a fan was of, a crazy, crazy situation. I'm still a fan of her, whatever, even if she You're doesn't like me. Shit. Um and uh yeah, and then <laughs> and then uh New Year's Eve. Um, obviously I had a bunch of things in store. We did the show together, yeah. which was like one of the best shows that I've Dude, ever that, done. That audience was insane. Yeah. Corinne Fisher's morbid New Year's Eve. Cause like when I went at first one on stage, I was like worried because they were so quiet, but it was just that I we hadn't performed for like our fans in a while. And I forget mm. that the first three minutes, they're just they're like, like stunned here. that I'm not a voice on a podcast that I'm a real person. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so one, and you looked smoking. So they're just taking you. I in. was wearing like next to nothing, which is hard to do stand up in because people are distracted. Did. Mm. Um, and but it's New Year's Eve. I'm not fucking showing up in sweats. And so yeah, and then so that show ended up being like great. I told all my most fucked up jokes, which was like what I really wanted to do, which is why I fucking named it that. Everyone crushed on the show. All my friends were there. It was so fun having like everyone getting on stage at the end and talking together. And there's a picture of all of us on stage. And I was like, this is, this so, is so sweet. sweet. And I was like, of course, I was like running around like a crazy like business lady because I I was like producing that show. Then I had another show after, and then I was producing like a 200 person open to the public party that was sold out. Um, and there were so many things we had to do. Like I had to like time everything to the minute. I had to like get in, get into a grocery store, get 75 bags of ice, like get that, like all these things. And like, Oh, you, you didn't order ice from a company. They, they kept canceling. No, they kept Holy canceling. Shit, I wow. did all the, of course I ordered, of course wow, I did everything I was supposed to do. Producing a sale. Also everyone, I, and I, but the thing is I also knew they were going to cancel cause it's right. New Year's Eve and right. ice is heavy. And I knew the person wasn't going to want to fucking do it. Mm -hmm. And um, producing a stand-up comedy show is notoriously one of the most stressful things you can do as a comic. Oh, it's so, so fucking stressful. Fuck. Then on top of that, producing it on New Year's Eve. Then on top of that, producing it right before you have a party. Well, because That's timing on New Year's Eve is so again. important because everything is timed around the ball drop. Right. And right. so like the, the club, the comedy club was already running a little behind. And then, but then it worked right. out because like uh, Joe DeRosa was a couple minutes late for his spot and I really wanted his spot time anyway. So I switched and then they cut my time. I was like, can we cut my time by five minutes? Because you guys need room back for the thing. Then I jumped in a car with these with other comics who were there we went on an ice heist and we chanted ice heist in the nice. in the supermarket and it was of course of course it's raining i'm in a yeah. silk dress yeah yeah we get to the venue people got staff members like falling and hurting his back everything's going crazy but it's like if everything turned out great the party was fucking insane me and ronnie were like i don't know how the fuck we pulled this off but we did it it was like fucking space themed and there was contortionists Ooh. uh and we did a fucking comedy show there or two and the DJ was amazing and it was just like a lot of things it really felt like it real. I was like it really felt like I had like an angel watching over me because I was Yay. like this was like Impo like it was, we we set up impossible circumstances, and I was like, literally every moment has to go correctly, otherwise the whole fucking thing falls apart. Mm -hmm. And somehow it did. And like I thrive on that, you know. Like I love, yeah. like I really would be a good party planner. I, I would just be like, Poof. like um. So it was pew, fucking pew, great. Pew. Here's ice. And then you know I got ninety minutes at the end after all the you know talent was done performing and everyone was paid, where I actually got to just like chill with like Ryan and Justin Silver. <laughs> then me and Justin Silver went. On on a fucking bender for the rest of the night because me and nice. there are some friends that honestly should be separated and me and yeah, Justin yeah, yeah. Silver probably are two of those I mean we fucking had a insane fucking night uh, we went to Joey Rose's Joe DeRosa's you know after bar the, after, after New Year's 
Yeah, so I wow. I closed down my party. I handled all the staff things because Ronnie left, like, and he, which was hilarious. He left before what? the party was over. What? Everyone on New Year's, if they have a girlfriend or boyfriend, they just want to leave at like 1 a.m. and fuck. Oh, uh, right. You know, right, right. so it, and that, and that's fine because I was like, I just like told the DJ to start playing like industrial music. And nice. then me and Ryan and Justin and, and everyone were hanging out. Um, and we had the, you know, the fucking room to ourselves for the last little bit. Um, and, uh, it was the wet, you know, it's like, I haven't been to a fucking party that was wet in so like, I'm, I'm 37. Our, my parties are dry. The ground is dry. Right. We had to mop so many times. Was there like champagne, like pouring champagne on titties? No, stuff? it was just fucking dr- drunk. Was, like yeah. I walked, I walked Spilling. in, Maddie Smith outside. fully f- f- pours a oh. full, a full cranberry I, vodka Maddie on Smith. my dress. Maddie what? Smith was by dangerous. Accident. By accident. She had a license to kill with that drink in her hand. <laughs> I, I, she came over to me and gave me a hug, and the, I saw the the liquid just going like, oh, it just, oh no, it just like, like, dumped fully up. between my tits, wow. like it, at the beginning of the party, and I was like, I the hope this is not an omen. Oh yeah, before midnight. And thank God, yes. I, my my dark green You're, dress like hit it, and I was like able to blot it down a little bit, and it didn't. I don't know how cranberry didn't stain it, but I looked at it wow. today, and it's fine. Because and was then like, she got another your glass angel of it was there and wanted to pour it on everybody else. It was <laughs> so funny, yeah. And then so yeah, and then so af- we shut it down at three, then we go. Go to Joey Roses. Joey Roses is packed. I mean, I don't know. I'm there till fucking 5 a.m. I think I get. Then I went to my apartment with Justin. Justin's like, grab the dog. Let's have a sleepover. <laughs> and then like, Aww, there's so like cute. all these like bottles out. My my ha- house is a fucking train wreck, but that's fine. And then yeah, we grab great. Alfred. And then like we go and we just had like a truly platonic. And I mean this. I'm not lying for the podcast. A truly pl- platonic sleepover at Justin's house. I woke up uh, January 1, 2023, with three dogs on me. Oh, and yay. I was like, am I? in heaven because it was uh justin's dog uh, brutus which who is like a hundred pound pit bull alfred and then justin was also watching his friend's dog arthur who's a little fluff um and they were just all on me and i was like this is i this is literally how i want to wake up every morning yeah and then justin admired his own abs in the light and he said how do i walk around like this and i said yes you are very attractive justin (laughs) <laughs> You're a very attractive man, Justin. No one's no, no one's, one's debating that. No, no one's, one's debating that. And then I looked at my face in the mirror and I go, "Oh, but this is not an this I look like fucking Heath Ledger and the Joker." <laughs> I said, "Well, I well saying, you partied hard." I said, "Friends don't I said friends don't let friends That's what I'm saying about walk men. around like this. That's what I said earlier Justin. about boys t- like male friends letting us know when our makeup's fucked up. Oh please, my god. Please, we don't check it all the time. We're not 22. He goes he goes I used to. I mean, and I also, I think I also like did, I think I did like a little bit of Molly at like, I don't know, four or five in the morning. (laughs) I don't even know if I felt it at that point. That's late. Because my friend, well, because my friends had just come back from the fish concert. So they're fucking out of their minds. Mm -hmm. Nice. I don't know. It was very, it was honestly, and then normally if I party that hard, like, you know, the strip club incident, like I wake up the next day and I feel sad. I felt great. That's awesome. I felt, I mean, like not like physically great. I just felt great. In you my accomplished soul. a lot of stuff. I and just it went well. I just like it's just like the, you know this is the New Year's Eve I had this year is like what we always hope I think in our minds that New Year's Eve is going to be like this absolutely magical rager. No one hurts your heart. No, mm-hmm. all your people are but you know everyone you love is like by you whatever. Really truly like just Aces. ten out of ten best Good. New Year's Eve ever. Good girl, you deserve it. How was your New Year's Eve? Uh, it was good. Very family oriented. My my yes. Christmas and New Year's. I was with my boyfriend's family for Christmas. That was really nice. His family's awesome. I've oh, ne- that's good. I've heard when people say like, um, oh, I, I want to break up with him, but his family. I'm like, what the fuck? I've never understood that. Like, right. What? I mean, I love my boyfriend. I'm not trying to break up with him. But like, his family's that good. I'm like, right. shit. Oh, that's I nice. Was, I was crushing it. I crushed meat in the family. Yeah, um, you're, a good, you're a good meat in the family. But like, they had a great sense of humor. They were really nice people. They're really smart, did really cool stuff. And like, they were just cool. It was great. We spent six, five days, That's, five days there. Wow. Loved it. God I fucking loved you. it. Um, yeah. I made sure to like 
I needed to be like go to the bedroom and be the only person. In yeah, the it was room. like you were saying like in there. Like, do they have a mm-hmm. big house that it was like you had uh, room? No, yeah, yeah, it was like a townhouse, but yeah. it was it was fine. Honestly, it was great. It was really nice. It was really nice to be around a family where I felt like I could be myself. It made me really like fully grasp in a deeper way. Like, I just can't be myself around my mm. parents. That's why I fucking don't like them. That's why I don't like them. That's why I don't respect them. That's why I don't want to hang out with them. But like, I noticed myself not wanting to hang out with them before I stopped talking to them, and I'm like, why is that? Am I just mm. a bad daughter? It's because I can't be myself around them hmm. it felt so good this cr- christmas felt so good it oh it was great and then new year's was awesome i had my seven-year-old nephew my brother came up with his girlfriend and my nephew brantley and he did stand up he closed yes. out my set great job he's a ballsy kid man he's a really smart sweet good kid and i was like you wanted he's very funny my brother was like yeah his teacher called me the other day and was just like <laughs> Brantley's really funny. Just mm. want you to know that. And That's he's like, yeah, so he's, funny. He is really funny because he's the only child. So he really, right. he understands, he has experienced the high of entertaining a group mm. and having them laugh at you. Yeah. And then he's a little hooked. So I was like, do you want to try stand up? And he's like, okay. And my brother was like, I don't think he's going to do it. I'm like, nah, I think he's going to do he it. He didn't seem nervous at all. He was fine. He was, he was like, like ready to go. Yeah. He was like, that wasn't that hard. I'm like, all right. I like uh, gave him a call time. I was like two minutes, Brantley. And he was like, all right. <laughs> yeah. He's super. Well, apparently he um, slipped on the stool. He was sitting out at the bar and like, fucked up his chin like oh the i didn't I see that oh. and my brother was like i thought he was gonna not come on i thought he like broke his chin and I was oh like, he acted fine yeah uh, i didn't see that at all but that was really fun and then we went back to my apartment it was just the four of us very low-key i went to bed at one well i went to bed at one and then i didn't get any sleep because my nephew kept farting we slept in the living room and uh oh boy you know <laughs> his uh, farts were so bad that they kept so you loud and he was sleeping on an air mattress so every time he moved it was like <laughs> He's seven. How much gas does he have? A lot of gas. Really? Why? Oh, yeah. I, kids also, fart. kids fart. Oh, really? Oh yeah. Kids I don't fart. remember that from. I mean, my brother or me. And, and I they love also it. Think it's funny, which is why I it's love like, that. Yeah, it's hilarious, yeah, like, Michael. So shit. It's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> no, actually. I know, of course. But, but I don't want to you know. hear in the middle. Like I'm Did trying they to smell. <laughs> yeah, some of them. <laughs> I, I, uh, Aunt Nina uh, loaded her house up with with sweets, uh, which I never do. And then I've been fucking eating in the middle of the night. I gotta just throw out this food. I've been eating in the middle of the night, not realizing it until the next day, and my stomach is so fucked up from it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I had a really good. It was very family oriented and not party oriented this year, which I really liked. I needed that. I needed like a little more grounding. So that was fun. Um, I was also um, one of the. I wanted to ask. I did this. I think we talked about this on the guys who fucked a lot that long ago and I'll, I'll be quick because I know we got to wrap up but uh, um, I th- or I, maybe I asked on my Instagram one day but uh, I, I have I have a uh, Spotify playlist on my Spotify account called Sex Club and it's all the songs that I'm like you hear the song and you get horny like that's how good the song like songs to fuck to but like songs to fuck two and i'm gonna give you two examples um obviously we can't play them because chatty kins is gonna go no um but this is one of the hottest songs i've ever heard and every time i listen to it i get horny it's called poor vu p-o-u-r-v-o-u-s by scorpio just take that write it down listen to it later when you're trying to fuck the other one there's so there's two songs that are on my sex club playlist that i would say are my top two poor vu is one of them and the other one is called woman by emmett fenn m-e-m E M M I T F E N N. So after the episode, go listen to these songs so you know which what kind of caliber of fuck I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? And then email us sorry about last night show at gmail.com. What is your favorite? Give me one. What's one song to fuck to that you really love if you have that in your repertoire? And I want to listen to them all and I want to put a list together of like the top 10 songs and we're going to put it on our Instagram, which is at guys we fucked without the you and fucked, which also happens to be the rest of our handles all across social media, including TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, give us a follow. It's the new year. Subscribe to our YouTube. A reminder, we we have the YouTube Guys We Fucked page, and then we also have a new page that is clips, only baby. clips. It's GWF Clips. If you go to the main uh, Guys We Fucked YouTube page, right under that, you can see uh, the little thing to subscribe to. I made it so that it's very it's easy as possible for you to find. Yeah. And then, of course, please also subscribe to Without a Country on YouTube. Um, yeah, that's a great new show, and there's a lot lot happening in the news that you need to keep in mind you know what else you need to keep in mind today's guest yeah that's exactly right she is a producer actor comedian from india born and raised in south africa she's produced and performed uh in her netflix special ladies up netflix's comedy premium league and amazon prime's improv specials ladies and gentlemen please welcome to the show Kanee Surka. <laughs> we are here with stand-up 
stand-up comedian, Camille Circa. So excited to have you. Have we started? Yeah, we started. Oh, my bad. Okay. We're just like, no, no, it's fine. We're starting here. Uh, we like we like to start just like, <laughs> Wherever. You, get the, you get the bicycle going right. and then you're off. I'm so excited to have you on. Thank Kunal you so uh, Aurora introduced us and yes. he said, he said to me that you were responsible for the stand-up scene in India or like a big part of the stand-up scene in India. Uh, b- b- yeah. Take That's credit. fucking take credit. dope. No one's going to check it. That's <laughs> No one's going to fact check Tell, it. You can if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> what was the stand up? Was there no stand up scene in India? Yeah. And how, how, so how, first of all, fuck yeah. And I'm glad Thank a you. woman did it. That makes me so I mean, happy. I, I didn't start it, but I was part of. You were part of the movement yes, to, to I mean, start it. That's yes, incredible. We were like one a couple of OGs. Why wasn't there stand up in, in so India? So the thing is, like, there was obviously there was comedy in India, but sure. it was like more like one man shows. And there was a particular way that they were doing comedy in India. Like, yeah, it was many one man shows, but the, like the Western form of stand up right. that's in America, we find in America and the UK, et cetera, like that wasn't in India. Like no one was doing that style in India. Wow. Um, and then I think it was 2007 or 8 Veer Das. I don't know if you guys yeah, know. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> he did a show at a theater, and I feel like that was one of the first stand up shows in India. Wow. Where we were like, oh, that's the American style of stand up. Uh huh. And so, like, that's what, 2007? That's like. So recent. That's exactly. very recent. And then that's kind of where it started. Like, and then 2008, Veda started doing some open mics. I didn't start to stand up. I started with improv comedy. Nice. Me too, yeah. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> and then you quickly ran away from it. Yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, this is a cult. <laughs> no yes and for me. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, but that's the thing. I can start with improv, but because it was everyone, like no one, it, we were all just doing comedy in India. So like we would do open mics, so we would do 15 minutes of improv and then like five open micers would do stand up. And uh, that was like the wow. only stand up comedy happening. That's, uh, that's so exciting. I know. And it's then how cool. did it grow? Like, how did you grow it? So the thing about India was we started, the scene began when YouTube and all these social media platforms started, mm. you know, rising. And so we kind of quickly went on to um, YouTube and started putting our stuff up on YouTube. And that's how the scene blew up. Nice. Because we reached so many more people. We didn't have the, it wasn't like, you know, you had to do clubs and get into clubs and then get into a late night show. Right. And that well, wasn't our trajectory The population all. of mm. India is so large and stand-up comedy is so integral to a country because you're going to yeah. get social commentary on it yes. from bold voices. Typically, stand-up comedy is just like kind of calling hypocrisy out. Sure. Right. Yeah. And so there's got to and so one of the biggest populations. So like there's probably a, such a hunger for that. I mean, yeah, there was like the thing is initially it was very English. OK, because we were imi- not imitating, but because we took it from the West. Yeah. Um, and we were learning from, you know, American UK. So it was very English. But now over the last three years or four years, you've just seen a movement towards you can see Indian stand up comedy becoming finding its voice. Oh, that's so because it's cool. becoming more Hindi, more regional. And I'm like, this is pretty cool. Like even the style is changing slightly. It's more Indian. It's more and you put your own spin on it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, like cool. you can you can see it adapting to the Indian sensibility now. Well, by, while before it was very American. Right. What is um, Indian sensibility? I think Indians like emotions more. They like stories. Mm-hmm. They like oh, that's yes, nice. I, I want to go there. It, they, I think they like it when you, um, when you, you know, you're vulnerable on stage and you. That's nice. Um, and there's some emotional parts to your stand-up. I, they enjoy that. Yeah, that's certainly Indians you do not do. get that with British stand-up and no. some some American stand-up you do yes. uh, because I think there's so many different style. I feel like Americans inter- injected so many different styles of stand-up comedy like the the jerry seinfeld of the setup punchline setup yes. punchline then then the hannah gatsby and the you know all like which is more one woman showy but more vulnerable yeah like, storytelling family life so yeah that's really cool that's the thing like people keep talking about like yeah hannah gatsby they were like it wasn't stand-up i was like what is stand-up what well, yeah i mean like everyone we're all finding i mean sure it has to be funny at the end of the day yeah <laughs> that was the issue yeah yeah <laughs> I can't sit here and but not some, hide my feelings. No, no, and nor should you. Nor should you. As, as an well, Indian, I love it. <laughs> well, but I've seen a lot of stuff. Like I, I was, I was doing a show last night at New York Comedy Club, and there was. I saw a couple comics go before me and this one guy was just joke, 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 mm-hmm. joke. Yeah. And this other guy like took his time and I'm like, right. I see, I like both and I sure. see there's an excitement to joke, joke, joke and you're like, you're just like getting punched with yes. humor like the whole 15 minute set. And I'm like, Ooh, that is lovely. Punch, punchline. Yeah, that's true. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why I love a show, a show, yeah. showcase show. I, I really prefer showcase shows over headlining Headliners. sets. I mean, like, unless you absolutely love the comic or 
if it's a comic like Eddie Izzard or something where they're just going to take a long time. Yeah. Um, he's like one of my favorite <laughs> You got to give him an hour. Right. But he, you, I, you, Eddie Izzard's not going to do a tight 15. Like, no, it's just no, not happening. No. He, just, he just goes off on tangents right, for right, like right. 20 minutes at a time. And you're like, wait, what was the original you're like, that was, that was the history of Spain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> How did we get there? <laughs> but is Eddie, is Eddie Izzard like joke, joke, joke? Oh, and actually, sorry. I think Eddie, Eddie's pronoun is uh, she, right? Is she, oh, yeah. actually. Um, uh, no, Eddie is uh, like like a like historical like like it's it's a it's a show yeah, yeah. it's and always he, a show and he improvises a lot if, yeah. I, if I'm not wrong uh, no I, I I don't know if he, oh. I'm not sure if she if she does it's we, weird but because the name's still Eddie but yeah 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 no I think she I mean that's what I I know what. Please Google it. <laughs> don't, don't take my word for it. I wish I'm trying. I was trying to date her, but she, I didn't ask. And she was backstage. And then we took a selfie and I was like, bye. <laughs> you were trying to date her? I, it was my dream to She's date Eddie. Is like for- date, not just to have sex with. Uh, like being in a relationship. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. That's I sweet. wouldn't. I actually never just try to have sex with celebrities. I always. <laughs> that's me. Wanna, that's me. I really go for the, the famous. The long oh, fuck fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. a star fucker. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Be- <laughs> have you ever fucked a famous person? No. Oh, does she masti- should. It's does fun. masturbation. Co- no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I can't. Hey, yeah. get, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not. That's good. Great. Next topic. No, but I think, you know, that's <laughs> good for you. It's, you know, there's a little have bit of you, desperateness. Have you? Yeah, uh, yeah. Are you allowed to, do you mention their names on this podcast? Uh, no. Oh. No, because I, we've been doing this for 10 years and I'm finally understanding So the, the podcast or fucking celebrities? The podcast. Sorry, okay. Um, <laughs> fucking celebrities started before. Yeah. That's, that, that was, that yeah. was that's ins- the inspiration. Yeah. Uh, but I'm finally understanding the, the real value in like keeping some stuff to myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of value in that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Corinne, Corinne's what? been on it for a while, but I'm like, oh, you know, you don't have to like just splurt everything out, like blurt everything everything out of your mouth uh, as it comes to you. I'm, I have a problem with like thinking before I say things. So Same. I'm learning. But wait, what's wrong with well, then people you, because yourself. then people have weapons to use against you. And also, too, if I'm going to fuck a future celebrity, I don't want him to think, think that I'm, that I'm going to narc on him. You know what I mean? You see, here's my thing. I'm just trying to set myself up for success. But like the thing is, OK, that yes, for the future ones. But yeah. I, like to what you just the point of what you just said, like mm-hmm. I feel like saying Everything actually de-weaponizes. You would think so. Oh. I tried it. Well, I'm like, I owned it. So you've got nothing on well, it's a, it. I guess it, de- I guess it depends what type of a thing you're talking about. Yeah, we have mm-hmm. different topics that we're honest about. I'm very honest about like childhood trauma because I kind of discovered that I went through it on the podcast. And I was like, oh. wait, what's this word mean? And then, oh. so, but then I, I, for me, that issue was like a lot of talking out loud to figure out what the fuck I even thought about it. So right. that I don't regret because that I think is it's helpful to watch someone's thought process. But I'm, then there becomes a time where it's like, shh. Yeah, I, th- I think I'm talking more about so like stuff like that. Yes, you get uh, put it on the table that no one can use against you. Right. But something, you know, for instance, and I'm just spitballing here. Um, <laughs> if you uh, are talking about someone that you had a relationship and then you're still in love with, I wouldn't I wouldn't like yeah. talk about that because then someone might be able to hit them up online. Um, yeah, and that right. would be really fucked up and huh? use it against you. That but would be good awful. thing. I always find everything out. She finds everything out. Like through research? Yes, I will know. You know everything. I will find out anything. And it might be it might be a year later. But you'll get you'll get a phone call. Wow. She'll give me a full report on whoever I'm dating's ex if I wanted it. <laughs> That's like, amazing. Like, it's wild. It's, it's wild. I, I I have that skill as well. <laughs> you right? do? Right. I, I can like find out anything. Really? Yeah, by going oh, wow. on the internet. I'll find like, see who's liking it, go to their page, see when you started following them. Yeah. Wow. I'll figure it all out. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, I'll figure it all out. I love That's amazing. Research. Are yeah. you single? Are you dating? I uh, uh, currently single. Cur- yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. What, wait, wait, why? Does it does like something happen recently? Yeah, something oh. happened recently. Oh. Yeah. Like you broke up or we broke up oh okay How, is when it, i say we i meant he broke up with me oh uh, <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Well, well you came to the beginnings. right place this Thank is you. breakup central we well, love this, it here this podcast started because um Karen got dumped in a panera bread so that makes you feel uh, better oh, yeah yeah and you gotta talk that shit out man did i pay for the lunch yep yeah no you picked two combo yep 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 added on to the dessert i've never Wait, dated so anyone guys, with money you nope, ate you correct. finished eating and then he broke up with you i mm. could tell something was wrong so i i was pushing it i think he was trying to wait till we went home after but i like just knew okay. something like i could tell women know mood stuff. was yeah. not correct yeah and so i pushed it during the meal so that was on me that part was on me and so was the meal yeah. how um <laughs> You got dumped. Yeah. But it's you know, probably for the best. I, sure. Even though it fucking blows. Well, if someone doesn't 
Lo- yeah, I don't. Uh, so Corinne, how long were you together? So that, she has the thing is the thing is like it's so nuanced. Like I know it's easy to just be like, oh, you'll be better off, and you know he was a dick and blah blah blah. But I was like, it's that's not layers. It's, oh, of course, it's, it's so nuanced. Like yeah. you know, he's got his stuff that's holding him back, and that's mm-hmm. why he did this. And I can see it, and I'm not making excuses for him. No, but, but sometimes I, you have another view of the situation, yeah. you have like a bird's eye view of and, uh, the situation. We were best friends for seven years. So. Oh, that's a long yeah. time. And he's best. a comic in New York. Damn. But we met in India, and then we would kind of like. Oh wow! Back and forth, but we were never in the same city. Yeah, that's um, a lot of history. Yeah, exactly. traveling and living in different places together. Exactly, that's, that's a lot. As in, like we were buddies. He was in India, and I came here, and, and like we just like meet every time we visit each other's countries. And, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm but, sorry. Uh, yeah. How how are you feeling like in this moment Ugh, about it? Heartbreak like, is it's a bitch. Do we? Did I? Does it? Is it the same every time? Do we just forget what it's like? It, sometimes it gets worse. Actually, I, think it gets worse. I once challenged oh, someone. Okay. And I was like, was it always? Is it always this bad? Well, it I think hurts. I think it okay, hurts. So I think like you get used to the feeling, but then I also think, and part of this is society's views on, you know, the aging woman, which I disagree with. Mm, uh, but I think there is something about it that's so ingrained in our heads, at least for American women. I'm not sure if it's yeah. the same, um, like like how you were kind of um, programmed. Yes. Uh, but definitely here, it's just like, you know, over 35, like, oh, you're dried ah. up. No one's going to want you. <laughs> All right, right. Yeah, crap. that's the same. That's and it also same. depends what your goals Everyone. are. Like, if you want to have married and get married and have kids, I think perhaps it's even more difficult. Like, I don't, and I'm, and I still like, I take uh, breakups very poorly. Yeah. <laughs> even when I do the breaking up, like it's, it's like oh. very. I, I I I was dumped once and it it, it, it turned into this podcast. But like, <laughs> truly. When, and then I that's thought, great. oh, I can never get hurt that badly again. And then I've broken up with two people since, and those were both, in my opinion, like far worse. What what was it about it? Like losing the the connection, the what? connection, or the future? You have, to, you have to like grieve it. Well, one one was just very complex because it has to do with my father's death. But then the other one was like because I I had it, I dumped that person because they weren't showing up for me, mm-hmm. and yeah. you want so oh, badly you want them for to them be there to for fight you. for you, yeah, yeah. And show up. And when they don't fight for and you, so so you're like I dumped oh. you, hoping Hoping that you would come, you know, not not ever with the thought of like I never you can you can never dump someone and then like assume they'll come back. No, I know, but but you, you want hope. you know, you but I'm um, like the relationship can't exist the way it is any longer in so, this and state. Then you, and he needs to make the changes. Yeah, and then you're like. Yeah. he's not making sometimes love isn't enough for you exactly and then she go that that sucks yeah no i mean like i a big a big contention with us was he wants children and marriage and i didn't oh so interesting he, yes. i'm glad you brought that up yes. i've i've had i've that was the breakup was that the for this podcast was because of that and he, same thing yeah 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 that was the main reason like he was ready to get married and have kids and i don't think i'll ever i i, I don't think i'll ever be ready or want to have kids and marriage like whatever yeah i don't care about marriage exactly like, I, if you if you really want it, I'll do it. That's I how care. I feel about uh, it. I've yeah, been yeah. married before, so I'm like, I'll do Did it. Did you discuss <laughs> before dating about these topics? Uh, he, he did bring it up w- in the beginning. Yeah. Like in the beginning, he he shut off once, once, which was, uh, it, and I was like, what's going on? He's like, well, what are we doing if you don't want mm-hmm. kids in marriage? Or and being like, together. Exactly. Or enjoying and each other's like, company. Here's my thing. I'm not like, I wasn't like a hard, no, I don't want kids in marriage. Right. But I'm just like, you know. So it, yeah, it wasn't enough for you to go, we can't beat it. Like, because if you were like, gung ho, you're exactly. like this is incompatible and um i think i think people think we'll change our minds yeah I, and, and and i might mm-hmm. I, mean, I might change my mind i'm very open to like changes yeah like, i moved to new york from india like i moved that's from, a huge change from yeah. South africa to india i'm like i'm just saying like i'm very open to like yeah. changing it up and my dad always says like if you're not changing your values you're not evolving as a person <sighs> sure wow and i you believe a great that dad. yeah he nurtured your spirit yes he that's did. awesome he did that's nice. and i was like yeah so my value i mean i might change you know if i find if i feel comfortable with someone i might maybe want to bring up a child with them yeah right right right, right. but so, you never saw that you never saw that with this i didn't i mean i was getting there Mm -hmm. how long did you guys date like date date five months okay so you were you were really close for seven years yeah oh Oh. i thought you dated for seven years you were just friends for seven years we were friends for because i was i I was like i gotta be on his side on this one seven years you gotta make a decision (laughs) no 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 no. (laughs) we were buddies for seven years okay okay purely platonic and then okay okay okay. oh okay yeah so wait did he did he cite this as the the reason because you're did. still not a hard no. Yeah, that's seems. the thing. He did, but I know he has other stuff. Okay. So oh, because I was like, five, mu- five months 
just to, isn't enough time to decide it. if you want to raise a child with someone or get married to them. Exactly, exactly. Although we did, because of our history, it was like... Eh, it was a little more. A yeah. little bit more. And our age, we're both like, I'm 39, he's 42. Like, okay, so yeah. like all of those sort so of So I guess factors. you do have to decide. It, you yeah. know what's so interesting to me? It's annoying. I have a lot but, of guy friends, like straight guy friends that I see, I get to experience them as a friend and I love them. Yes. And I see how they are in relationships. Not all of them, but some of them. And they're yeah. just different. They're different. I'm like, God, I would never be on the... Re- I would never want to be on the receiving end of romantically with you, w- romantically with you. But as a friend, I love you to death. So you really got to experience mm. it. And you said, um, uh, what was the word you just you had said? Um, aloof or like anti, uh, like avoidant. Avoidant. So was did he display those? I've avoidance? been reading books. Yeah, <laughs> me too. It's exhausting. <laughs> when you know all the terms, you're like, oh, uh, God, exactly. I you're know like, exactly what you're doing. Oh, uh, exactly. Um, did you experience avoidant behavior when you were just friends? No, that's the yeah. thing. But I, mm. I was the girl who would like I set him up with a lot of my friends, or yeah. at least two of my friends when he came to India, and I saw like his behavior towards them, and I had to. I felt like I used to be like I used to play, uh, play PR manager for. <laughs> Because mm, you saw the side of I him saw that from I'd a friend, go, and, my, and my, go to my friends, I'll be like, "It's not you, it's him." He's a, he does this, you know. He's <laughs> no, he hasn't had a, he's never held on a relationship in like twenty years. I promise you. And I used to like do all the damage control, wow. and now I'm on the re- receiving end, and I'm like talking to myself, yeah. like, like, giving the speech to myself. He does this. He, yeah, it's not you, Kenny. It's him. He does it every time. I'm like, what the fuck? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's so fascinating. Um, <sighs> so then, wow. why did, what 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 happened that you ended up getting romantically involved after all these all this time? Um. I, you know, that's the thing. I don't, I don't know because just I looked wasn't, at each other a, a different way one day. Yeah, that's exactly it. Like that could I happen, I, man. I moved here. We kissed one night. Uh huh. Okay. I, but I was like, nope. Yeah. Because we were like, what? Mm-hmm. But I was like, no, this is that doesn't. You're my friend. It doesn't yeah. feel right. And then two months went by, and I remember he. Um, I didn't see him for like two weeks. I was meeting him a lot. So he's one of my close. He was my closest friend in New York. And even before I came to New York, I came here six months ago. Oh. I used to like talk to him every like week because like and he it was he helped with my visa, like getting letters, and so Aww. we spoke a lot. Um, yeah. We had this um, this plan of me coming to New York was it's been a four year plan, and he's been on it oh, been cool. in on it since the beginning. Wow. Um, so you had, a, you had a pretty intimate friendship. Yeah. Then, I would say. Yeah. yeah. And so I came here and then we kissed and then, and then I didn't see him for two weeks for whatever reason. He was touring or something. Yeah. And then I remember like meeting him. He thought about you for those two weeks. That avoided well, I charm. Met him. Mm, <laughs> I just I didn't see him for two so weeks. Much. And then I I remember like meeting him at some hotel in the East Village or something. And I remember just like getting off the tr- uh, subway station and just like so excited. Aww. Almost like I wanted to run into his oh, arms. That's f- oh, yeah. yeah and okay. then I had two shows after that. At um, I had two shows and I remember he was going to come watch. And then suddenly we walked to my shows. And I'm like, like, uh, you can't watch me. Yeah, so you're developing feelings. Yeah. And that's yeah. when I knew, I was like, wait, the, the only pe- the only time I don't let people watch me is when I have feelings for them. And I was like, yeah. what the fuck? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when I recognized, oh, I don't know where they came from. I have no idea where they came from. <laughs> yeah, well, they but fucking, he obviously felt the same. Yeah, I think he, from the first kiss, he might have felt like a little bit more then. Uh-huh. And then maybe. And then... Um, yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm I want to I'm going to go on a diatribe about this and when we record the intro later. But um, yeah. there's this interesting concept. Um, do, you, do you know the author Michael Singer? He wrote The Untethered Soul. No, sorry, um, he's aware. just like he's like the the guy I'm into right now. I've, I've I first read that book a couple years ago and it like changed. My, it's like my Bible of, of like how to exist as a person. Is but he one of the celebrities you want to fuck? No, okay. <laughs> no, but I love this man. Okay. Um, sorry, but no, it's OK. <laughs> I would. If, I also if love he was, that you I'd consider you. an author a celebrity. That's I mean, like, Amazing. Oh, that's sweet. Right? That's, that's that sweet. That? You're, you're a complex and enriched woman. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have a lot of layers. <laughs> lead with your intellectuality. <laughs> Sorry, please, um, please continue. No, no, it's okay. Um, but he has this this concept that he talks about in 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 his book where he's like, when you when someone gives you these feelings, hmm. they're originating in you. They're not giving you these feelings. Right. So, but it's like whatever, they're they're just a line. There's this perfect little jigsaw puzzle in front of you that that matches your stuff. He just calls it stuff, which I really appreciate because it could, could be childhood trauma. It could be a, right. a guy dumped you okay. two years ago and it really your fucked you up. Whatever. whatever it is, whatever your stuff is, you know when it gets hit because your heart closes. That's what he says. Like you feel your heart close when you're dating somebody and they do something to make your, like they say something maybe that you find insulting or whatever, your heart closes. You could fucking feel it. Ooh. 
Ooh. And but so I'm in, I'm interested in this concept. So these feelings arose in you over time because he's helping you with all these things and like Maybe. being there for you in a real way. That's yeah. like really that's intimate, right? And so I'm just like, yeah, just that that concept of like that's why breakups hurt so much because we have this like idea in our head that they're taking that feeling away when yeah. the feelings in you the whole time. And there's this there, basically Michael Singer argues that you can feel madly blissfully in love like the way you would feel with a person that you're just falling hard for or whatever without another person and i'm like hmm, i don't i don't know that i believe what, you, but i just really manufacture want to figure those out. feelings yeah. within us yeah without, it, but you don't manufacture without, them you've blocked them your whole life is like you like building up blockages and like people being dishonest with you or screwing you over in one way or another and it, it makes you defensive it makes you so yeah it's, it's well we tell ourselves a story that we want to tell ourselves which is why you can also make always. up a reason for a breakup to heal it that's right so yeah. that's, right. that's not michael singer that's what i'm saying is from a, a therapist called guy winch okay. who I will recommend his TED talk to you. Thank you. Uh, but he Thank talks you. about uh, breakups uh, in the way uh, like like an addiction, like basically like you have to get over it, like you're getting over an addiction to right. cocaine Anything. or alcohol. It is. It's, yeah. a, it's a dopamine and mm-hmm. it's just so you're so addicted sad. to that person. Yeah. And but the thing, like, yeah, like you're suffering. I know. No, it is an addiction. It's like I mean, there's been studies where they show mm-hmm. like the brain on cocaine and yeah. Love and but mm-hmm. the yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I know, but I know, like with a substance, like I've been heavily. Addicted addicted to Adderall and coming off that I didn't get sad but coming off of a breakup I just get so sad I mean it's like it's sad as shit it's so I fucking don't sad I remember this feeling and I thought it was maybe the humans forget so that we can continue procreating maybe um, I thought like or that we can right? be vulnerable again you know and exactly. then we don't That's close what, our exactly. heart forever you you just, just, I mean because it's, it's just when you find someone else that you love I mean that's how you, you heal it, it. Right? that's the only time yeah. you can heal it it's part of the sadness Completely. of a breakup because you're like will I ever feel this with another person again that's a big I don't part want, of the breakup almost like I don't want to yeah here you're I hear like you at this point in the I hear breakup you. I'm like I don't want I don't want somebody else I don't want you feel the same though you know I mean the loves so the love that I've had with people wasn't the same love. Yeah. I don't find it to be right. I find it to be there are some qualities of it I think that were similar, but like the loves in my opinion for me very were different. very different. Yeah. yeah. So I don't I, I mean I because I agree with you. Like we want also though women have an obsession with things being unique. <laughs> like love being unique and it's not. Yeah. No, that's, that's yeah why, it is. What are you talking about? That's why you guys are like when you guys are like so you got into a relationship with him and knowing that he was had all these avoidant traits. Because it'll be because it would be different it, for it, you. It was going to be different yeah. with uh, us. Uh, <laughs> which I didn't even realize that because that's just how I operate. But you it's know? such so a it's beautiful quality. <laughs> like I, it's a beautiful quality to possess in life. And that's why we are mm. successful in our career. Right. But it's a, uh, yeah. I, I think it's a, it's a quality that in love hurts women. Oh, it hurts so bad. And it sucks. Do you, do you think, sorry, I should ask you guys. Sorry, oh, are you yeah, guys single? Uh, no, I'm, oh. I'm seeing somebody. But I, I am, somebody. yeah. I just want to know, like, do you find it hard as a female comedian dating? Do you think yeah, that sure. plays? I'm sorry yes. if you've spoken about this before. No, no, uh, never yeah. gets tiresome. Because, like, I mean, as I'm just wondering, like, is that a man threatened by? Yes, okay. sometimes, sometimes not. Sometimes they think it's cool. Sometimes they don't. I feel like if I lived anywhere else, I wouldn't have a problem dating. I think it's a combination of being a stand up and living in New York City. Oh, just surrounded by fucking tens everywhere. So I feel like there's this like, is there somebody better around the corner kind of vibe? When you say ten, you mean like. Like, look like a hot, hot people. Like a hot person. But like hot, successful, exciting, lovely. Like there's just a lot of catches but here. I'm like, isn't being funny like so cool? It Not is. to men. That's it is a, really I, cool. I, I, I agree I with you. Right? But it's only cool to other male comedians. Yeah. Yes. Right. Right. Which is what or I other date, artists. Which is what Accountants I don't think it's like awesome when you're fucking getting yeah. zingers in at the business <laughs> meeting. <laughs> I wish they did. It's like the but first dating a, with a crowd work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Accountant. Oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, Christina and I did an experiment on the dating app Raya where, you know, uh, we went on with the occupation comedian and Christina no wasn't matches. getting any hits. And I said, change it to writer <gasps> no or way. performer or something so, else. And she right, changed it to writer. And she changed it and immediately. I got so many I, matches. Because I said, it's, like, not your, it's not your face. It's I not know my it's face. Not. It's not my age. Because I'm getting nothing my, on Raya. Zero. Don't, so change it from a comedian. Are you serious? Uh-huh. Yeah. I thought that would be like you. No. I did too. Oh. Like a swipe right what in. A, yeah, I did a beautiful too. naive thought. I know. Wow. Uh, no, it's you literally. I'm learning so much. Literally yeah, the most wild. repulsive career that you can have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say you could. You could say. I'm gonna try this. Etsy like, owner, store zookeeper, owner. poop department, <laughs> and, they, and they would be like, "Oh, that's <laughs> she's well, an animal. She's, she's really gonna be there for me <laughs> when I'm sick. <laughs> She'll pick up my poop when we're old. 
Matilda. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. yeah no, stand up comedian is not. Yeah. I really thought that was going to be like I the hear star on my profile. Yeah. Like, woo, and I man. love that. And it, like, I think, I think like, I when, want that to be the truth. This is blowing my mind. Genuinely, this is blowing my mind. You changed to write and you got more hits. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I got hits. Like a lot. Zero. And I had hot photos. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. What? Okay. Yeah. I you never know what I, you know what I should do? Comedian. I should take it a step further and reactivate my Raya profile and just say uh like I'm a crafts uh, I do crafts or something <laughs> like <laughs> something like crafts. I, yeah. yeah, something like that. Fashion designer. Yeah, yeah. Kindergarten teacher. I own a boutique. Oh, kindergarten, kindergarten teacher. teacher. Mm-hmm. We'll have to get her security. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gentlemen, put your dicks away. My, my god. Put your dicks away. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Little, not very much room for growth and nurturing. I mean, come on. Sorry. To, like, my mom's a teacher. <laughs> Everyone relax. Um, yeah, I know a teacher. I can make these jokes. <laughs> I was raised by a teacher. Everybody. Oh, that's insane. Yeah. Yep. 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 How? How were you? So you you mentioned quickly like this beautiful piece of advice that your father gave. Yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so I I assume, but tell, correct me if I'm wrong. Like you grew up in like a very nurturing environment by your parents. I did. My dad was very attentive to my emotional well being. Wow. Oh, I, I love hearing about dads who are emotional and I'm, like have daughters. I mean, he, like so he's not emo- like he's not a very emotional person, but he was very attentive. He could like read. He just reads people really well, and he could tell when he had a lot of emotional intelligence. He did. I remember once when I was like twelve. Um, I was. I remember just I was twelve, and I started freaking out because I had two projects to hand in the next day, and I couldn't. And I was like, I think I had like a mini anxiety attack at that mm. age. Although we, although I, would, I didn't know it was that. Yeah. And I remember my dad like just being like, just drop everything. He tucked me into bed. He did like a relaxation, a yoga relaxation exercise Ooh. with me, where oh. you tighten your muscles. And you release them yeah, like, yeah. throughout your whole body, and um, oh God, and then he like dad. put me to sleep. And then the next day, I woke up, and he's like, "I've called school. You don't have to go in today. You can finish your projects." And I was like, "Nice, that's yes. beautiful." Right? Oh my God, he was so there for you. Exactly, and I don't think like he made a thing. He was just like, "This no, is what my daughter in, needs right now." In tune to your emotional needs and helped you. I mean, that's, that's fucking great. It is pretty great. That's I, awesome. Yeah, I remember this. I remember this recently, and I was like, "Wow, I, that was actually really." That was so sweet of him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about your mom? My mom's very loving, but I don't think she always has the ability to understand me. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that happens. Kind of, yeah. 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 So, um, and my dad does. And so that's where we nice. are. My mom's also like, to be honest, like I've had a very terminal relationship with my mom and Same. we're now like, I've, after six years of therapy, I actually, for the first time, feel a lot of like genuine love for her. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Did you go to therapy alone or did you both go to therapy? No, no, no by myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Do you mind? Like, I'm curious what, like, was, what was the breakthrough? What did you have to understand about her? I just had to understand she's her own person and just Mm -hmm. find, like, just find compassion for her and not expect her to change. Yeah. And accept, accept Accept the parent that you got. Accept her for who she is and accept what she's done for me. And like, now I see it. Now I see all the great things she's done for me. And I, for years, I didn't. I just remembered all the shitty things. Yeah. Um, And I was just like, wow, like, it's, I I also, the perception I had had of my mom was also very one-sided. Of course. You know, and I was like, I forgot about all these good things. Mm-hmm. And now yeah. that I'm seeing it, I'm finding love for her. Oh, that's so yeah. nice. I, I know. I, I never, ever thought I would get to this place. Wow. So you were you. So does that mean you were at a place where you're like, I don't like you? Like, I don't want to be a, almost connected to like you? I know. I mean, she, I didn't talk about this, but yeah, I was like, I, I want to cut this toxicity out of my life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I yeah. have to like cut it out. I know it's my own parent, but I don't know what else to do. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. I can't keep living like this. I can't keep going on like this. Right. Um, so were you, I'm, I'm asking you all these questions because no, I, I don't talk you. to my parents, either of my I, parents. I cut oh, them both off. So, okay, uh, okay. but I'm like, oh, I don't, I always wonder like, oh, I wonder if there's ever a place like I'm learning from my mom's biological sister, like more, my aunt, right. uh, more about her mental ill, my mom's own mental illness. And it's given me a lot of perspective of yeah. like oh my god you just Put you it. didn't get the help you needed and you if, know? You, if you picture your mom as like an eight-year-old little girl yeah and yeah like, everything, like my mom was also like she went through a lot with her parents of course yeah and then, like, I as hear it th- always works that's how it always, and she was better than her mom was exactly she's better to you than her mom was to her that's just like this is how it works but it's like how do you reconcile mm. uh you know you didn't get what you needed but the damage that it did to you yeah. It's just, yeah, you just bet everyone's own individual <clears throat> journey. Exactly. I'm just like, well, I can do the blame game 
all then just figure it out yeah. on my own. And then I did that. Nice. And I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm just yeah. like, I just chose to. I was like, I'll figure this out on my own. And, and everyone's situation and is so unique. You're the only person on this planet with your two parents. Exactly. So Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, it's interesting. Did they? Um, did you have, like, like, a conversation with her, like, about, like, going to therapy? and he, Or did you just be in acting differently towards her? Yeah, like, the therapist, like, it was, like, boundary <clears throat> issues. And then we, I started putting, like, explicit, like, boundaries. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was very painful painful because I felt yeah. very guilty where I'd be like you can only contact me once a month or whatever like I put these explicit boundaries um with her and it was yeah I felt like such a bitch I yeah felt, she even went to hospital once and I drew boundaries there like mm-hmm. that's really amazing and I wouldn't spend the night over I caught I felt that's so, so guilty but I'm so glad I did it because yeah. it, it really did help yeah our relationship that's amazing yeah that's amazing because everyone's like aren't you gonna say to your mom in the hospital and I was like this is going beyond my boundary yeah mm-hmm. no and then yeah. I, I got a nurse for her to look after her. Yeah, and it's I was like, such this is what, this hard. Is the best I can do. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of yeah. hard work to put a boundary in. Like you have to so coach shitty. yourself. You have to keep talking back to those thoughts and be like, "This is the right decision," even though yeah. it feels like I'm punishing a child I never asked for. Yes. Like, yeah. But that guilt is horrible because yeah, even though yeah. you're angry and you're like, "Ah, oh, you're so toxic," you're so, it's so complex. Yeah, you love the feel... person. They gave birth to you. Exactly. Like, there's going to be a level of respect there, no matter what. Exactly. You know, for, at least for that. Did they? Um, did they give impart any wisdom when it came to like you becoming? a woman getting your period dating sex like how was that how were those subjects handled <laughs> my mom that's the thing like my mom was always like anti-sex for me as, as a like before marriage i guess okay oh that's the thing my mom for some reason my mom was a bit of a she's a bit of a prude about sex huh. like she's very sexual in her relationship okay she just but, keeps it in her yeah, bedroom literally. exactly exactly mm. um but she was like she was always like i remember when i was 10 i was going to a valentine's dance in south africa and a boy asked me out to the dance and then my parents like gave me a sex talk then be like you know you, you can get pregnant i was 10 i had 10 yeah i, I had even early. hit puberty yeah right. but they were freaking out about the fact i was going to a dance with a boy huh and they're like you can't go and then i just went to the dance and met him at the door and walked in with him which was what it, that meant then yeah. going to the dance with the yeah. guy was like you just met him at the front door and walked in yeah yeah, yeah. and that's then it. that's it he's not putting his dick in me no we're exactly 10. We're, we're 10, 10 years old <laughs> and then when i was 18 my mom before i went to university my mom wrote me an email saying like <laughs> <laughs> you will meet lots of men but you must remember to you, you keep your virtues intact and like some I don't fucking know. That was her way of calling you a whore. don't be a whore. Yeah. And <laughs> don't be a whore, Canise. It didn't work. And then, <laughs> Were you a whore in college? Yeah. Nice. And then I owned up to everything. That's when I learned like giving information really can be very useful in a sense. Right. I would like hook up with people and then my brother also, also was like, don't like, if you hook up between people, you'll get a bad reputation. Mm. And I remember just being like the next morning, just going to the canteen and being like, this is what I hooked up with. And then everyone's like, oh, now we can't bitch. Because yeah. she, she said it. Yeah, now, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. now it's not scandalous information anymore. Right, true. You took also like, unless you went to a very small college in college, it's very hard to get a reputation. It's not high, high school. I was, I was in like within the Indian community that I was hanging out with. Oh, because okay. oh, so, so in the group. Yeah, okay. in the group. Yeah, okay. in, the, in the Indian community on, on campus. And it was a small campus. It was like 5,000 students. Oh, oh yeah, that's, that's pretty small. small. Yeah, it's pretty small. But yeah, so my mom kept like, being like a little passive with it yeah and then um and then i got married and then i got divorced and then after that she just was like how old were you when you got married 25 i was a baby you little baby yeah, yeah. how did that how, what like and how old uh, was the person you got married to six years older than me so 31 okay, okay. um i met him in india uh-huh. I, I moved to india uh-huh. on a gap year and then i just never left for 17 years um and i met him there and i was like oh this is perfect i met a husband and i really did grow up i had no ambition Really? I, yes. Really? I had a man ma- gave you ambition. As in a man, the, the divorce gave me ambition. Oh, I knew there was a catch. Okay, a man, a divorce, uh, you, not a man. you leaving a man gave you ambition. Yes. Okay, because I was I was about to be like, this is a guy's be fucking exclusive. <laughs> I was like, the research I've done in the past what? ten years just went down the drain. Men are useful. What? <laughs> they they have they value. They inspire me to be a better. Person? They have value. Huh? <laughs> yeah. No, it was just I I've, I've just never heard a story where a woman gets married, stays in the marriage, and then no. things get better. No, exactly. No, that's so. <laughs> and I would love. I would love. To. We, I would we're, love to we, hear we're that story. We're open to that. We're open to that possibility. Yeah, yeah. So how nice. how you, how long did you guys date before you're married? Like a year and a half, but it was like an arranged marriage sort of situation where oh. where it was arranged from his side. It was love from my side. Oh, huh? That's because t- that that's hurts. terrible. Yes, because I. We were from the same community. We were both Muslims from the same community. And okay. so when you meet someone from your community, that switch is already like potential. Right. Like it's not like a random. It's a lot to have in common. 
Exactly. And then we're like, oh, this fits perfectly into my world. My yeah, parents yeah. will approve. Everything will just work well Ugh. around this. And so he was looking to get married. He met me. I was, I grew up in a very liberal household. These kind of things weren't, apart from my mom giving me sex advice, like trying to keep me like. Uh, um, don't but, be a whore. Yeah, right. Don't be a whore. Because your, your parents was a love marriage? Yes, they were yeah. a love marriage. Okay. So. They were a love marriage. So like I grew up in that yeah, that household. So I was clearly they made him, a like, sex tape. <laughs> exactly. well, so, you don't do that when it's arranged. But so, I mean, I, sometimes I th- arranged marriages really they, they do, work and out. I honestly do out. understand the concept because yeah. people get in their own way so much that it's like nice to have a matchmaker. Exactly, you know? yeah. and then you're like, all right, I'm just gonna leave this up to somebody else. Like yeah. that's my plan next year is to give my friends my social media. Um, um, but password and ask each friend every week and then ask them to set me up with a date every week because I yeah, don't trust idea. myself that I'm not going to be attracted to another avoid. Tr- yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I don't trust myself. I hear you. I'm I scared. Hear That's the only thing I'm attracted to. Ah, right. I wonder why. Why do you think that is? I mean, I have. Avoidant I- mom? Or maybe, oh yeah. I don't know. I, it's not always the parents, I but know. like they're, they're, <laughs> it's always as much as well, I if you're setting blame up, every m- one of my faults on my parents. It is not important. always the parents. But if you're set, if you had to set boundaries with her about contact, it seems like she's contacting you too much, which would not be avoidant. Exactly, but mm. no, but uh, emotionally avoidant. Oh, okay. Like I mean, what while she's still there, like she should cross the boundaries, but still not understand. Present, but not right. vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, yeah. Right. like she didn't understand me. Yeah, gaslight me. You could whatever. be, you could be attracted to avoidant uh, person. You just know how to have to. You have to just know how to be avoidant people at their own game. I'm avoidant. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's true. Are you anxious? Or? Yes. Oh, okay. I have anxious traits because of therapy. Now I have a lot more secure traits, but nice. but default is anxious. Yeah, With, it, it just like just it's just like annoying. Of anxious is annoying to avoidance so if you just yes. like can force yourself to pull back a little bit it's then an so avoidant true. will come towards it's you so you have to so just true. let avoidance come to you that's yeah, yeah. that's the yeah, total yeah. trick was your husband avoidance was your ex-husband I don't avoidance? know I was trying to figure that out because I was uh, yeah I was like I'm not I don't remember because he also had anxious traits like he would okay. get very jealous and like I don't remember mm. I don't think you he, can be anxious avoidant I don't yeah. think realize. he loved me well, so that that's it. a big problem. Yeah. That was it. So when you say it was arranged on his end, like he his... was just like tick 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 tick. Okay, you check all these boxes. You check all these so boxes. I guess let's do it. Yeah, and then you fell in love. Yeah, is it? Because I'm a dumb fuck. No. <laughs> What a fucking idiot, Kinesi. You I like, was you an want idiot. Love? I love. No, fuck that shit. Love is Aww, one of the greatest no, things on the it planet. Is, it is. But it's, I, I, you know, I always wonder, like, if I'm falling in love with somebody, that means they have to at least have some feelings for me because. You would think. Yeah, how could I fall in love with somebody who's not at all in love with me? I was yeah. fully in love with Dane Cook. He didn't know who I was. Yeah, but that's different. <laughs> that's like a. That? Is, it, is it? Because you didn't date him. <laughs> it's a mental illness, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> Does he know that? Well, he's but he never. He know. He knows now. But I mean, this he's was dating like a, like a twenty-two year old now. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He's married. He's in, he's engaged. But like, no, no. This was like when I fully was Great. not a comedian, just in college. Like, and then I ended up telling the story at the comedy store in front of him, and he thought oh, it was. He thought it was great. Did but, you know he was there? Uh, I didn't know he was listening. I knew he was there because I was about to bring him up. That's why I was telling oh, the story. Oh, that's yeah, right. but uh, I yeah, videotaped no. him. I just assumed he it. wasn't paying attention because he's a famous comedian. Why the hell would he listen that's to what so, I was saying? That's a great story. But yeah. but it, but it's different when when the person you're, you're actually dating and you're getting married and you're falling in love like in your situation. Yeah. Denise, ha- there's no way he didn't have feelings for he you. He was right? fond. Of, he did have feelings for me. He liked me. He was fond of he you. Was fond oh, of what a way me. to put it. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, gosh. How, how, how did the how did the Ooh. how did these inklings of like I don't think you're in love with me first start popping up? Um, when we just didn't have sex mm. for how long? Like what? It was just people... we struggled with it. And listen, I'm not blaming him. Like yeah. I, it was also like I, as an anxious, I would also just like there was so much stress around it. I also caused like made it a very yeah, when yeah, yeah, stressful yeah. situation to be in. I've been there. Yeah, yeah. So Making like, sex a big deal is the worst thing uh, that yeah, can happen for yeah. sex. Yeah, and it became so yeah. stressful the yeah. whole thing. Yeah, yeah, so we yeah, just, yeah. He avoided it because not I mean he was just like I don't want to get into that so I don't yeah. even think it was like I don't want to have sex with you it's like this is just, it was the combination of the yeah. anxiety attached and then to if, it. if something yep. like something doesn't happen or if I don't if I'm not erect then you're gonna think I'm rejecting you then like you'll start crying like it's, and so yeah. I, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm not blaming have, myself I was like we had parts to play. it's the combo yes it's a combination of the both. combination was not a, a fruitful no. environment for love to, for like true love to blossom yeah and I think like if I like you know I always think like if I I wish I knew what I know now then mm-hmm. it would which is very different. Yeah. Just everything that I know now. Yeah. Like I would just have been so different. And but obviously I don't I wouldn't know everything that I know now if I didn't go through that. So, I know. But, Experience um, is the fruit of life or whatever. So I can only apply it now to future relations. That seems like it wasn't the person for, for you anyway. No, it wasn't. Uh, he wasn't. Like he was also like he wanted a, a traditional wife. I don't know if like he what knew does that, that. Mean? 
like he just wanted like he like even like he was also Muslim, like I said we were the same um, and he was like I want my kids to be Muslim okay. and it's a mother's duty to impart religious knowledge on children and I was like wait the dad doesn't have to do it I, like that's it. like he was like part the mom the would yeah the part of the role mm-hmm. and I was like well I don't believe in Islam and I don't think that's the only way forward like if they choose it I will support them but I, sure. I will have to tell them that there's many options right or no options nice. whatever mm-hmm. but uh, and I remember like the day before he's gonna ask me to marry him we got into a huge fight about this oh and that's a big one end of the fight he was like I was gonna ask you to marry me tomorrow and I was what like, a proposal hell yeah and you were like wait 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 you can still act <laughs> yeah, exactly I was like sure I'll be Muslim Allah Akbar please don't reject me that's such a 25 year old response that's so funny gosh oh it's funny looking back at it you know what I mean like yeah. it's funny, funny in hindsight um <laughs> So wait, did then at the end of this conversation when he said when he reveals this to you, were you like, you could still do that? Oh, I, would, um, I don't know. <laughs> we made up, I guess. Mm-hmm. And then the next day. So what about that question you were gonna ask? Yeah, the next uh, day he did ask me. Wow. Was it like a lackluster oh. ask or was it like No, a, it was cute. Okay, good. He did a little cute thing that I told him to do <laughs> for my birthday the year before, but then he used it for the proposal, which so is I'm right. very fond of you. Yeah, very <laughs> fond of me. How did it did go? He said, has he said, like he said, I love you during the marriage? Yes, yes, yes. He said he loved me. Okay. When you, uh, I think he did. Who brought yeah. up divorce first? I, I made the decision in the end. Was he like, what? We just, or was we he did, like, yeah. No, no, we decided, we were like, we got married and then we went past the next day with like all our friends and family came for the wedding and we got into a huge fight and we were like we need to get divorced like a day <laughs> after our wedding we we're like we need to call this we need to call it quits and so it was just a succession Damn. of like every, like in the three years you're married which is like like every two months you'd be like we need to get divorced we need to get divorced oh, yeah, and then eventually that's oh. a sign. yeah obviously yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 so you always that's, kind of knew you're just like well, well we did the did yeah it, but so then we tried try. we tried a sex therapist we tried a hypnotherapist we tried Hip, wait like, hypnotherapist yeah like a past life regression like, whoa yeah, yeah. Oh, you're speaking my language really? i love past life regressions oh, yeah, dr we, brian weiss many lives many masters is one of my favorite books but also oh, yes. if you got to go into past lives to make that that's not good it's yeah. probably not good we, i tried everything yeah. did you discover that's you cool. have past lives together yeah, yeah. Mm, yes he was my mother in one ah Ooh, interesting. interesting i discovered was. that one my of... stepmother sorry whoa and he loved his real daughter more oh uh, yes. juicy yes. So just repeating Dude. the similar feelings Something, past yeah. lives are the most incredible portal into like explaining what the fuck is going on in your head and yeah. certain relationships with people it's why i mean i i i believe it for myself yeah i think there was some like it helped me in some way well how you, deep did you okay so i've done mm-hmm. this and i feel uh, i feel on the fence yeah, about it yeah. um uh wh- how like deep into a meditative state did you get before this happened or did someone just completely do it for it? like how did it how no did so that's the thing like i you she hypnotized trans, me. Yeah, yeah so trances or a hypno- hi- being hypnotized is like a really high focused uh concentration of meditation usually about 20 to 30 minutes i don't even really believe that everyone so can, everyone it. can't be hypnotized and I, I i truly believe that i'm someone who can't be hit so here's hypnotized. the thing the only reason i recognized it i was like whoa yeah because even when i was in hypnosis she was like okay what what image do you see i was like i see a river and I was like, I feel like I'm making this up because I watched yeah. a show that had a river in it Me last too. Night. I felt like I was making up the whole thing. And I was saying it. I was saying, she's That's like, normal. She's like, just continue telling me what you see. Right. The only the only re- reason I thought like, whoa, was when I woke up and I was like, okay, that was 10 minutes and it was an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. And that's when I was like, what? Like, yeah, a lot of past yeah. life, when Dr. Brian Weiss does it, he does it for three hours. The sessions are three hours. And I thought, I literally of... thought it was 10 minutes. I could hear the like the fan whirring. Like I was so aware. That's one of the so reasons why. I was like, why... how did that feel like 10 minutes? You know, yeah. it's real because what one of the, you know, you'll never really know if it's real yeah, but yeah. uh that's one of the one of the attributes of like a really legitimate re- a regression because you're going to a place where time doesn't exist because right. time doesn't actually exist it just exists on earth so we can like you know schedule shit <laughs> allegedly schedule shit yeah yeah like that's your interview great. yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you got divorced from him were you like yay i'm free yeah i did feel relieved nice. i did feel re- and that's when i was like because before that I wasn't ambitious and, and I like while I did grow up in a very liberal household I, it was also I, I also was conditioned to believe that a man would provide for me mm. okay. and would give me my security and so even in university I was like whatever I don't have to find a career because I kept stopping and changing and moving to India I was like oh like yeah. it's floating because I was like when I find a man then I will you know I'll be secure right um, and that's when after I left and I was like oh I it makes you put a lot more weight on 
meeting somebody, doesn't it? Like when you start falling for somebody, you're also like, oh, love, yeah, but also security. Yeah. And now that's not a That'll thing. That'll create an anxious attachment. Yeah. Then that's not a thing anymore for me. Right. Oh, that's I awesome. my own security now. Nice. And that's yeah. after marriage, I was like, oh, I don't think a guy can do this for me. And I don't know what happened. I just remember it's not a solid like, foundation. No, not at all. And that's what I learned after my divorce. And that's mm. when I got into comedy and I was like, I'm going to. I'm going to do something. Now. Well, it's great. That's why like, I was pr- prancing all around stage like over the weekend at one point, And I remember <laughs> having this thought like, wow, I can run my mouth wildly <laughs> because I have enough money to do yes, so. Exactly. <laughs> Crazy. Man, make I had that thought while I was on stage so and I was like, I can just really bash men. <laughs> That's exactly it. That's exactly it. Felt great. Freedom. It felt fucking great. It feels great. Exactly. Like even like I felt bad for the other woman in the audience. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Did you just go Oh, because they can't have they that didn't freedom. have that security. I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna trade, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, I've become. Yeah. I've be, I'm, I talk so much because I'm like, who's gonna? I'm accountable to nobody. Yeah, yeah. Pretty that's fantastic. Pretty cool. That's pretty Although cool. My money's running out here in New York, but apart from it that, it does that to you. That's what that's yeah. one of the things the city does. That'll drain your fucking wallet. Uh, um, so that's I'm, why you, you so now learn to hang out circle. with friends at their apartments. <laughs> so I've come full circle to wanting to find a rich man again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what? What do you want for your future? Like, what? Aww. What do you envision or oh, dream I, about? Okay, this is going to sound really lame. No. But as an improviser, I really do like to live my life where I'm like, I like to find connections and then build. Like in an improv scene, like, you you know, you're not supposed to, like, you have an idea, but when you meet someone else's idea, like, you guys meld and you come up with an idea that neither of you could have thought on your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of how I see life. I'm like, I don't really have, I'm like, I'm going to meet people and they're going to come in my life and I'm, let's just see where we, you That's very yeah. open Oh, let's be together. friends. I love that. Yes. You're so cool. Yes, you exactly. Friends? We can hang out. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love making new friends. Well, to me, that's Can't one of the points of living in New York City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's, uh, that's like the, the spice of life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. This friendship. I think the only goal I have is to make fifteen million dollars. I don't know where that number. That's came a very from. specific. <laughs> I love that for you. <laughs> but like it's just stuck in my head now, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna get there. I've been buying lotto tickets. You can get to week. fifteen. Do I buy lotto tickets all the time? My God, girl, we could come scratch scratch the crossword lotto tickets. I win a lot, honestly. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, it's weird. You win money from the lotto? Yeah. It's well, a that's a scratch off. I was like, the big big money is, in, is in the number. I play it. Wait, ones. so, so what's what the scratch off? Like how scratch much money off, can you can you win up to two hundred thousand dollars, but I've only ever won up to five hundred. But that's not too. Gotta shabby. play Powerball, yo! Oh, I play Powerball right. and Mega Millions as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. I've My thing is like, well, you. if anybody can win, I can win. So fuck it. Yeah, you know? exactly. true. J Lo and, and J Lo's mom wanted a slot machine. Oh wow! How much? A little unfair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know. <laughs> She already had a slot machine. There you Maybe go. she J-Lo. doesn't want to be dependent on her daughter. Yeah, right? but like, yeah, like, but like it's like winning. You didn't earn it. Like I would never win the lotto and be like, oh, I, I got, I earned this. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, would. Yeah, yeah. I, I would just would. be like, this is like just extra shit for my art. You know. Yeah. Um, well, That's thank nice. you so much for coming on the oh, podcast. Thank you. We really Jeez, appreciate we, it. Yeah. Speaking that, of time not existing, yeah. Was that one hour? hour? Yeah, we did a past yeah. life regression actually. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god, <laughs> that's what it was. It yeah. felt like you're on the right track. What would you like to promote? Where can we find you online? Where can we see you? Um. Wow. Uh, follow me on YouTube, on Instagram. I don't have anything coming out uh, anytime soon, but I have a lot of stuff on my channels. Nice. So please check it out. What's your um, handle? At Kani Circa on everything. Awesome. At Kani Circa, yeah. Yay. Thank, thank you so, so much thank for being you so much here. Thank you, you for coming. Really appreciate this. Yeah, it was, it was very cathartic. Yay, good. <laughs> good, <laughs> I love that. That's what we aim for, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this has been Guys We Fuck the Anti-Slut Shaming Podcast. We'll talk to you next Friday. Yay. Thank you.